You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. And we are back 1084 at the box. Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast, where we bring the Firehouse Kitchen Table to you guys. Self-proclaimed best firefighter podcast. Self-proclaimed. What was the other one, Pete? Self-proclaimed best morning show. <laughs> self and yeah, self-proclaimed. Self-proclaimed uh, coolest guys around. That's all I can say. Yes, self-proclaimed. That uh, one we're not going to pull off. There's no way. Nah, nah, no, no, no. no. Self-proclaimed biggest in the pants. Self-proclaimed. <laughs> oh, what about that? Well, good one. Welcome back, fellas. We're back, Leatherhead Nation. We got a good guest for you tonight. Great guy. Great guy. Love him. Yeah, man. What do you say, Ruffy? How's it going? Out I got there? a lot of little birdies texting me on this guy too. We got a lot of chirping. A little, this a little chirping. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yep, have to be yep. throwing thoughts tonight. I got some thoughts. You got some? Him. I All do. Right. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, any golf today? What'd you do? No golfing? No, no golf. No. Oh shit! It's, Tomorrow uh, season's coming, man. No, that's oh, it. be very He's... quiet. It's no <laughs> more you know, golf. What happens? <laughs> Lou's shining up his guns in every oh, every deer in the tri-state yeah. areas. It's uh, sh- puckering. Their, it's puckering. I got the sphincter. twelve on the seven, right? What is he? What is that, Cobes again? Uh, yeah, seven. Yeah. 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 I got the seven I, and the fourteen, but I can go with a Glock nineteen with the twenty-two if you want. I don't my, know. My, my guns are for uh, hunting tyrants. <laughs> yeah, not uh, oh, not yeah. deer. Yeah, yeah, man. All How right, how you doing so, out there, Pete? Oh man, I had a busy day. Dude. Hey, you know what? You know who I worked with this week, dude? Uh, probably I'm getting close to probably my last couple gigs in TV now because I'm about to do something. Uh, Except for when this kicks else. off on a TV show, bam! Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Uh, but uh, the but but for the, what I've been doing all these 27 years, I worked with freaking Ray, Ray Liotta from Goodfellas. You know, really? so uh, was he cool? Yeah. Oh, dude, he okay. Quick story. Hold on. And if you don't know, oh, who Ray this is going to be too is, long. I know. This is not a quick story. No, no, no. Very quick story. Karen. So, so <laughs> very quick. That, that thing where Pesci, that, where, where Pesci uh, goes, what am I, a clown? I amuse yeah. you. They Never heard impro- it. They improv that whole scene because it happened to Pesci. It actually happened to Pesci. Really? Um, by, he was eating with some gangsters in like an Italian oh, restaurant somewhere and huh. uh, he goes yeah you know what the way you say that it's really funny and then the guy just gave him the old you know what I'm a clown I fucking amuse you nice. and, and then they bad. just Im- improv it and then they showed Scorsese and he was like let's put that in because it was just going to be him grabbing the dude by the by the thing and breaking the bottle over his head which had no context so it was perfect beautiful oh look who we got back in the chat he's back Franny's he's in clear. Franny Franny, Franny's in the house Franny's yep. in the house Excellent. 1084. Nice. 1084. So, right, uh, Thanks, man. Pete. That's that was not... a great story. I appreciate it. That's great. Yeah, awesome. All right. <laughs> was, it, was it terrible? You never knew no, that. No, it's one of your better ones. I, 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 I was going to say it's five minutes of my life. I never get back. But... <laughs> All right, give you us some what? quick shameless plugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what it sounded like to me? Let's see if Pete can read my mind. You know this what is what Lou story? sounds like to me. Karen. All right, let's get them in here. But uh, first, guys, you guys know the deal. It's gettingsaltyperil.com, where you will find mm-hmm. cool things like this, where I fill my tumbler with mm-hmm. leftist tears, typically very salty but delicious. Also, we have wonderful T-shirts, hats, apparel. Uh, I absolutely love the Zippo with the fire blowing out the side, but Louis mm. won't have one because they're very expensive. You know what I mean? So uh, he keeps that uh, he keeps that to the side. I'm going to have steal one. Mm. I'm gonna have to steal one the next time I work there. I work on work a show. So if you guys like all the stuff that we have to provide and if you want to support us, support the show, head on over to GettingSaltyApparel.com. And guys, also tonight, you know the deal, the super chat. Don't be super cheap. chat. Hop in that super chat if you guys want to throw break us off a few shekels, and uh, also if you have a question that you absolutely positively have to ask. And if anybody in this room asks our esteemed guest anything dumb like, duh, hey, 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 ask him if you work with Joey Babats over in Forty Three <laughs> Truck. Ask him if you worked with him, Pete. Ask him. I swear to God, I'll ban you on principle. Wow. Hey, right hey, you know what? It's, 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 a, it's a yeah. You never That's ask anyone bad. a yes or no. If, he can, if they do a yeah, I, worked chat, with I don't him. care what they put. I don't care what. <laughs> they put. 
ask me whatever. What color my old lady's underwear? Yeah. I have. I'll go check right now. That's true. No, yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Gonzo. Ask, Thank they, you. They always ask who they work with. Oh, mm -hmm. great. And the guy goes, yeah, I worked with him. Yeah. And then it's, and then you hear this. Right. You know, so right. ask, ask some better questions. All also, right. guys, remember, like, subscribe, and share. Yes. Most important, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button now, you cheap bastards. It's free. Yeah. All right? And, uh, you All know, three of us show. were in trouble, by the way. Quickly, we got in a lot of trouble from last week's show from Mama Kubla. A lot, uh, with a lot of potty mouth going on. She said too much Not potty me. mouth. Me. I'm sorry, Mama Kubler. Yeah, I apologize. Right. All right, I just want to dedicate this show to some portly little fella who brought me some of this. We ah. don't know what's in here. <laughs> this could be. This could lead to potty mouth tonight. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Never. Happen. never All right, let's get our to... show. Let's get our, our guest in the show. Great guy. I love Forty this guy. tree truck. Forty a Harlem guy. Very years. scary. 34, 34 years, years on the J.O. Bizzle, Harlem, uh, <laughs> the one and only Kirk Lester. There he is. There he is. There Kirk, he I is. thought you were falling asleep back there. I was falling asleep up here. <laughs> we heard it was my story. Apologies. It was Pete's story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Just, well, listen, just, 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 can we cut to the chase right now? I did work with Joy Baba in 40. I did work with Joy Baba. So All right, that's cool. Right. I think so, everybody so has a Baba. Ladies, today. ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to give you a heads up. We've been having a little technical difficulties all night with uh, Mr. Uh, Lester's. Uh, signal there so something's going on so just bear with us and that's just the way it is tonight we're that's gonna it. work through it we're gonna yep. work through it is it, is it still that good it's, it's fine it's Don't worry about it. it's good fine. Enough. you're good good enough yep. all right pete you want to give him the word okay. of the day we'll explain that later what the word oh, of the day is yeah i don't oh, know oh yeah okay okay the word of the day today ladies and gentlemen the getting salty experience word of the day is BG. Woo! Jesus. <laughs> so BG. we got a picture of that. We'll save the explanation for later. But yeah, Pete, we'll bring up it. the we'll picture of, uh, of of BG's lounge. Yeah, that's where uh, Mr. Lester frequents, I heard. Oh, I, uh, yeah. You it's know what? It's, I mean, it's a good time to explain it. I mean, we might as well, you know. Do you want to explain it now, Mr. Lester? Uh, it's. It's it's very simple. Uh, uh, as you may know, as, as we all know, the firehouse in firehouse human is humor is humor of the obvious. You know, uh, you know, if a, big, if a guy's big, he's you know, you know call him big Mac, fatty or whatever. So <laughs> fatty. Uh, uh, one day, uh, somebody was having difficulty trying to describe who I was, and uh, they said, you know, the guy, he, you know, he's on your softball team, he plays first base. Sometimes he plays the outfield, he's left-handed. They've gone all around the circle. So finally, the, the guy from my firehouse who said, he said, the black guy? And he said, I didn't, I didn't really want to say that. You mean the BG? <laughs> said, the BG. He's like, I didn't really want to so, say that. Yeah. <laughs> so I really didn't want to say that. So just, I just want to say that uh, it's, it's, it's a term not of disrespect, but a term of respect. Because everybody in the kitchen and everybody in our firehouse knew that I wore my ethnicity with great pride, and and I took great pride in being called the, the black guy because <laughs> it's who I was. I mean, it, it was the most obvious thing about me. And wait a minute, hold <laughs> on, <laughs> hold on, wait a minute, you're black, really? <laughs> oh, Pete. holy oh, shit! Pete, you, you just stole. stole that from me. I had it right here. I was waiting I'm for. I'm so sorry, bro. Good <laughs> job, bro. Good job. <laughs> yeah, that came that came up also when I met my in-laws in Ireland. They were like, "Whoa." <laughs> you, did you tell him you were black Irish? <laughs> Holy be Jesus fucking shit, he's a black guy. What the fuck? When, you told, when you told us he was black Irish, we had a whole different vision of it. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's the thing that, uh, you know, people who, who say, you know, who, who might have a problem with it on either side of the coin, yeah. it's... Uh, that's with them because it's. I wear it with pride because that's uh, that's a pride of of uh, being a black man, and I'm proud proud of being a black firefighter and uh, being called the black guy. That's uh, they, uh, <laughs> that's a very great. big honor. In fact, uh, when uh, we got a uh, 
second black firefighter in, in 43 truck. He was named OBG. The other, other black, black guy. Other black guy. <laughs> So, hey, at least uh, you weren't the other guy. You know, what I mean? you were you were the first one. Oh uh, my so that god! Was me, and he was the other. So but that was a forty-three truck thing. Uh, you yeah, can't make uh, that stuff up, man. You uh, cannot yes. make it up. But that's that's what's cool, though, because okay, so we're all. Well, hold on, let's old. not get too far. Let's not get too far ahead because yeah, we got say, a lot of questions. Yeah, we're going to talk yeah. about that. That's yeah. really. I'm just saying, it's really cool that you guys could do that. Let's and start no one out with it. It's not so sensitive. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's start in your early days. So. Where'd you, where'd you grow up, Kirk? Where, what part of the uh, city did you grow up in? Well, uh, let's, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say I was born in Harlem. Uh, <laughs> ah, I, I stayed, full circle. I, I stayed in Harlem uh, until I was uh, the grand old age of two, of which time my, my parents moved to the promised land of the Bronx. And at that time, so I, <laughs> I always say I was born in Harlem, but I'm from the Bronx because that's where... I'm right. from that. Those are those are my basic roots. I lived in the Bronx. Uh, hence, the Bronx. hence the hence the Yankee fan. Like you, your grandchild to have all the Yankee apparel on. I oh, see. Oh yeah. Let's uh, uh, put it this way: to call uh, me a Yankee fan is a gross understatement, and it's a in my uh, family being a Yankee fan, it's a rite of passage. Uh, who are these? Uh, who are these Yankees? We never heard of them. Who are these jankies? That you speak of? <laughs> the jankies. <laughs> the champs like 25 times in a row. 27. Oh, 27, oh. but who's counting? Somebody asked me once, uh, did you uh, become a Yankee fan? You know, just when they started to win. And, you know, like this was a guy probably 35 years old asking me this. Yeah. I said, yeah, you're right. Uh, they won five world, uh, five American League pennants in a row. 1960, 1961, 1962. That's when I became a Yankee fan. Yeah. I was, you know, I was ten years old. I mean, I was, a, I was yeah. a child. Uh, hey, you went through some sucky times in the late seventies. The Yankees sucked in the uh, late seventies. No, right? that's that was, you know, yeah, that was just, a, that was just a drought. I'm in a, I'm in a, a detour. Right. Yeah, try oh, being a Met fan. Try being a Met fan. See how you like it. <laughs> yeah, we were born in Queens. That's what we got. We yeah. got the Mets. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Mets. You know, listen, I have no, I have, I, I really respect people who, who. who uh, Root for, for their home. The home yeah. Home. You know, listen, no matter whether it's good a, or bad, right? Little League team called the Bombers. Everybody in the 60s in the Little League mm. wanted to be the Bombers. Right. And I played for a, a, a team, a Little League team, and then later a, a, a softball team that was called the Bombers. Because that's everybody wanted to be the Bombers. Yeah, word around town is that uh, you swung some heavy uh, lumber there, fella, as a first baseman. Well, actually, by the time I got to be that, it was heavy aluminum at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was no longer. I, I only swung. I, I swung wood as a as a very young uh, player. Right. But I we, we did. I was very fortunate to be in a mix with a lot of great players, and uh, I was I, I was proud to be part of it. And I was just a small part of it. We <laughs> we, we we had a great run, and then we all got old. To, we we all got great together and then we all got old together so. that happens yep. yeah all right so you grew up uh, in the bronx what leads you to the fdny you have family on or you you just uh, uh... no as a matter of fact uh it was a it was a backup plan uh my dad was a new york city housing uh, police officer and so we understood the whole idea of uh civil service but at that time uh my major goal was to get a college education and go into and go into banking, and I was uh -huh. going to get rich in the banking field uh, and be. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, graduated college, graduated high school, and went to Baruch College down down on Twenty. Roofie, that's where we went. We went, we went to, to Baruch, Baruch too. Baruch <laughs> and you know what? You know who's a, one of our more famous alumni? I don't know. Not me. Uh, Danny Nigro. Oh, is that really? Right? I didn't know that. Danny Nigro is a Baruch alumnus. Huh. I didn't know that. Uh, and so. Uh, I, I went to. I, I took all the civil, all the civil service tests. I took the police tests. I took the uh, all at that time the three separate police tests, you know, transit, housing, and NYPD. I took them all. I I, uh, I took the fire tests, of course, and I uh, sanitation. I took that test. They were all backups to my college education. And uh, the police department actually called me when I was nineteen, and I was going to go into the cadet program and. You know, be a cadet and then and then uh, be a cop from there at 21. 
And my father said, uh, wait for the wait for the fire department. Because there were two reasons. Uh, hmm. He uh, wanted me to didn't want me to be a cop, and he also <clears throat> wanted me to try to wait until I graduated college. I was gonna maybe finish college before the fire department called me, uh, but that didn't work out. They called me my junior year, huh. so I went to the fire department and said I'll stay here until something better comes along, and I stayed 34 years. Nothing ever came around, right? So that was, was, uh, was the best it gets. You got appointed at 1124 of 73, right? Yes. Yes. And how long was probably school? I guess, uh, let's see. Eight you weeks. Came out. Eight weeks. And you got eight us. Eight weeks. Right. Yeah, I think it was, eight Kirk. Weeks. I think it's eight weeks. Right. Yeah, and it's you got weeks. assigned to uh, Ladder 42? Yes. Where were they? Oh, that's Elefante. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. the Elefante. Petey, we got his probie yes. picture, right? I yep. sure do, this handsome devil. Check him out. Oh, man. Sharp. <laughs> Sharp. Guy. Look at that guy. Yep, mm. it's not doing That's too bad, I'm sure, with the ladies. By the way. That's the first. Uh, I was eight I, months, twenty-one when I got appointed. Oh wow, you were young and. I was not the. I was not even the youngest guy in my class at eight months, twenty-one. No, two guys young. Two guys younger than me. Huh. Hmm. Sharp looking fella, that. So how long you walk? You walk in. All right, let's talk about what we're going to talk about before Ruffy. Let's talk okay. about what it's like. You know, there weren't many white guys. WGs on the job. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of white guys on the job, not many BGs on the job. So right. I'm sure there was uh, some resistance, some, uh, you know, well, I mean, because we're talking about 73. Right. That's not too far off from the civil rights movement, right? So I'm sure. Well, this is exactly what happened. Um, we were, my list was uh, challenged in court and it came up, it became known as the one in three list. So for every three uh, white firefighters, there had to be a non-white firefighter, either of African American or Latino heritage, uh, appointed, which kind of like was a great thing for me, but also kind of messed up my plan because it it jumped me from the middle of the list. Right, to the it front pushed of the your list. phone. Right, and nice I job. didn't get to finish school. But right, that's, right, that's right. Another side. So. As you probably you know know, uh, when you're in probate school, the fraternal organizations come out, and and you know they they recruit you, they speak with you. So the Balkans uh, came out and they told us that you know what we might be in in store for. Store for and right, of course. What might happen and how to and how to deal with it and what to deal with it if things went really bad and what to do. So you know, I'm 21 years old. This is. Listen, this is the only full-time job I've ever had. I came straight from school I, and, and put down books and picked up uh, a hook. A know, hose, that, right? Yeah, that yeah. It. So I didn't know anything. I didn't have a lot of really worldly, what you would call worldly experience. Uh, so I listened and I went and I and I listened. And, I, and then my first day at 42 Truck, I came with my little Proby uh, uniform on. My personnel folder under my arm, and the captain. I went to the captain, introduced myself, and the first thing he said to me was, "We've been waiting for you." And I'm like, "Holy crap! Oh. Here it comes! Here it comes!" And I said, "Yes, sir." And what? Wh wh he goes. Then he said to me, "You're the first guy assigned here, in the born in the '50s." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, so that's what they're waiting for." So it, that was like. A relief. It, the the ethnic part never came up, like outwardly. Right. Uh, there were a couple of guys that took me on the side and said, "Listen, you're going to hear a lot of ethnic slurs around here on, on all from everybody." Right, not, right, right. Not just directed towards me. No, no, I got you. Towards the Italians. Gotcha. The <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes. So what stay? What's said in this kitchen stays here. And you know, you know, you, and then somebody did go a little too far. He says, he says, he says you're gonna, he says you're gonna have, and then, you know, it was very hard for me because they were a very senior company, and I was very young, and you know, so I felt like I had to take a really far back seat because of my age and you know my my inexperience. So one guy said to me, uh, if you hear the N word. Don't take it 
seriously because it's, I go, no, I go, he says, he says, don't get too upset. And I go, nah, and he just shook my head. I said, well, you know, that, that we'd have to talk about, you know, and I, I just let it go. <coughs> it, it never came up, you know, uh, what people said, you know, uh, you know, other than, but nobody ever directed anything like that towards me. Uh, they already had a, there was, I was not the BG there. Right. Uh, there was, uh, another firefighter there of African American descent, already there when I got there. Uh, but he was not born in the 50s, so I, I still did claim that. I still <laughs> right. did claim that, uh, right. the child title. But uh, one of my first days, and I don't know if you guys are familiar, 42 truck runs in with 48 truck up in the Bronx. And one of my first days on the rig, I'm riding in the phone booth. back Right, on days. the side, yeah. Not yep. even on the rig. In the, yeah, yeah, you're in the back, yep. Yeah, Cam Man's in the phone booth. 48 truck pulls up, and on 40, in 48 truck, they have Jimmy Henderson is driving, a black man. John Gilstrap <laughs> has got the irons, a black man. And Charlie Bishop is the lieutenant, a black man. And I go, so what's the big deal? I'm thinking to myself, there's plenty of black guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you. And, like you, um, you gotta check like, them out. I, I thought that was unique. God damn it. <laughs> so, and then, but I did, and one of the things was on that run, Lieutenant Bishop came over, then Lieutenant Bishop came over and shook my hand because he knew me as a child. I grew up All right. went to school with his daughters in the Bronx. And he said, Welcome. He said, If you have any, if there's anything that you need, you make sure you. That wasn't Homer Bishop, was it? No, Charlie, Charles Bishop. Oh, Charles he, Bishop. Homer Bishop was a, what? Chief of the department? Yeah, chief of the department. But Charlie Bishop <clears> uh, <throat> retired as the battalion commander of, a, of the 11th battalion. And, uh, but he knew me since I was really eight years old. <clears throat> wow. And, uh, so you used to run so in with him pretty regularly then. You used to see him yeah, for well, the time that you were there. Because he became, he became a captain soon after that. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was, he was one of the reasons... <clears throat> that that my my dad told me to take the fire department job and i said what do you mean they worked near each other my father worked in the when when uh Charlie bishop was a firefighter at 17 truck my father was in the worked in the housing project right next door and All right. they got to know each other really well and we lived near each other in the bronx and that's usually how it happens school with his daughter yeah. so he said uh listen when i leave for work I see Charlie Bishop cleaning his car. <laughs> when I come home from work, Charlie Bishop is cleaning his car. <laughs> <laughs> he says, and on the, on the very rare time that we're both working at the same time, I go to the firehouse to eat my meal, and they're having a grand old time in there. They're yeah, watching TV, right. they're, they're, they're laughing and carrying That's on in the funny. kitchen. And then they go to fires, and they seem to have the time of their life. When they, they've been more happier when they come back from the fire. Right, yeah. right, so right, right. That's the job for you. Well, thank God for your old man. He put you in the right direction, well, right? That's how it usually happens. I mean, in the end, that's yeah. most yeah. of the guys we get on, it's one of those things where that's that's how you get on. You know, if you don't if you don't have family on the job, like I didn't have family. No, I had so. I had no idea. My first ride on a fire truck was in probably school on the back step. You know, wow. in probably school. The, how long did it take you to catch your first job, Kirk? You remember? Oh, you beat me. Oh, yeah. believe me. Uh, that was that was another story. That was about. I probably we weren't working 24s then so i probably was about almost two weeks and that oh, was a long you? time of yeah, i was gonna stuff. say what were you the white cloud there that's what they they were calling me the white cloud uh at, at how time. ironic so <laughs> my first my first fire was actually a vacant uh, a partially occupied building and it was we rolled up and the fire was blowing out of three windows all at one time and i was like whoa and um, after the fire, we we stopped, and I and I I asked the guys to stop, and because you know you had to celebrate that, I bought a box of cigars because that's all I was allowed to buy at that time. So I bought a box of cigars. Eddie Ahern, who was my lieutenant, God rest his soul, was one of the, one of my mentors. He said to me, "Kid, that was no fire." He says, "You." <laughs> He says, when you drag that can down 20 feet of hallway to put out a, a mattress, 
you you'll know that you've been at a fire and i go oh, right what this what does this guy know that was a big fire sure enough next set of tours i'm dragging this can with no mask down 20 feet of hallway to put out a back to <clears throat> water on a back room and i get my butt kicked and in the hallway later he goes will we be stopping for cigars <laughs> and I go, okay, <laughs> that was so you guys was, uh you, you weren't were, there was no mask back then right back in the early 70s well, like that we had masks but they were in suitcases on the rig yeah uh, right so they yeah were, they, they may not be for first two companies they were non-existent right you know you got that if you were you know called to a box after the first alarm you put the mask on uh, right but <clears throat> mask policy probably became you know, effective, I probably 78, 79, something around there. Right. And then, then they took the mask out of the suitcase and put it on the rig, on, on the, in the brackets. But yeah, then it was so, fine. Can, so, can you guys hear me okay? You yeah, hear you yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. So it was riding the back step and no mess. Love it. Yes, yeah, riding the back. Oh, that was a big thing for the engine, riding the back step. And they took them off the back step. It was, that was holy hell to pay. Did you uh, work any to uh, yeah, many tours in the engine? Were they doing the thirty day no, detail no, no, at all? No. I did probably in those days. We were uh, we were a very small battalion. Uh, we were the only truck in the battalion, and there were only battalion wide details. Wow! So uh, you know, I was a very young firefighter there. I didn't get detailed a lot. We were in the five five battalion, which is no longer in existence. But it was us, uh, the engine squad two. Before squad two, before squads became hybrids, they were basically, you know, emergency engine companies. And uh, and there were two engine companies, 41 and 41 two, which then became squad five up in the Bronx. So it was 43 truck and four engine companies. So if I ever got detailed, it was to an engine company. Huh. So that's the only reason I spent a lot of time in the engine, any time in the engine. Catch any good jobs on the knob up there in the Bronx? Oh, well, no. they wouldn't give you the knob. Let me tell you something. The the, the last person that that any of those veteran firefighters would give the knob to would be some, <laughs> some, Johnny, <laughs> some Johnny Trump guy. Yeah. Of course I got to, <clears throat> but listen, I did I did have the can, so I count that as kind of nozzle work. Yeah. I can for, for, the, for my whole first year, uh, you know, because they were such a senior company. Um, I, I didn't get, I didn't come out of the phone booth for quite a while. Stayed in the phone booth for quite a while, but yeah. it was a blessing. I, I learned, I learned a lot. Uh, Mikey Milner wants to know if you ever worked in 50 and 19. I did not. We went we, uh, 50 and 19 and 42 and 73 are in the same battalion now, but they, they weren't then. I did not work there as a firefighter. I worked there later as an officer when they, you know, when I got assigned to the sixth division. Right, but not as a firefighter. So, how long so did it Kirk, take it? Go ahead, bud. Who who were some of the guys that you remember? I mean, we're gonna. You spent obviously an incredible amount of time in forty three truck, and we'll get there. But who were some of the guys uh, besides <laughs> so, who you remember on. in forty two? <laughs> I gotta 42 say, truck? Kevin. Kevin, uh, wait, hold on. A second. Kevin Malone said that Joey Babats never gave up the nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to. So, who were the guys? I apologize. Uh, uh, Jimmy Ginty, John Fumato, Frank Pampalone. Oh Michael my goodness Blackley. gracious! Uh, Those are some pretty uh, good guys to learn a job from. Huh? I would say oh so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jack McDermott, wow. uh, the the uh, future commissioner, Tom Van Essen. Really? Wow. I was there. Uh, Let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Bobby Blair, uh, oh, uh, Van Helsing, Patty Gilchrist, uh, they were part of the Elephant Crew. Uh, they used to do a thing where they, you know, they entered a room, they would hold each other by the back of the belt, and swing the three arms. <laughs> like the elephant. The elephant. So I was always I like the it. last elephant. I was the <laughs> Back of the oh my back. god, that's freaking awesome! But, uh, uh, great guys, great firefighters there. Uh, <clears throat> what about uh, Lieutenant BG? Hey, <laughs> oh. <laughs> those guys got a drink, Kirk. That's what they got to do. That's those filthy animals. <clears throat> 
So how long did it take you before you <clears throat> understood the humor and the mentality of the firefighters where you felt comfortable? Like you didn't uh, take offense to shit that they said or? Oh, well, it didn't take long. I, I, meant out, I left out one guy very important, Huey McGevna, who kind of schooled me on, see, see, a lot of what they did there, especially when it came <clears> to sports, <throat> it was very important. I, I always was involved in sports, always as, as a young man. Uh, I, I wasn't the greatest player, but I was very enthusiastic player, I have to say. So, and we played at Castle Hill and Lafayette, which I had played in many times as a young man. Uh, uh, that's, that's way, that's the 1980 championship uh, team. Lefty uh, too, huh? Nice. Lefty. Lefty. Look like Ken Griffey Jr. there, for God's sakes. Yeah. No, if you, if you look at it, uh, some of you may or may not know Bobby Higgins. Yeah, yeah, sure. Was, was, the, was in 231 for like forever. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and a captain. He said, this, he, he said, I look like Fred McGriff. That he, he named me yeah, the, you do, uh, actually. You do. Yeah. <laughs> you do. <laughs> so, uh, it's got the guns uh, working. Playing softball. I'm, in the, I'm <clears> playing softball with the guys one day. And like you say, guys didn't, uh, I didn't have any skills. There were, at those times, a lot of the guys had uh, skills in carpentry or brickwork or plumbing or electric. electric. I had none of that. So, uh, you know, I was like a, a guy that would, you know, help and hump things and do basic pump work. So Huey McGavin came to me one time and, uh, and, and I said, well, what do I do? Do I get to play ball? Yeah, and, and I played a couple times, and he said, you know, he saw that I was pretty good, and he said, he said, listen, everybody brings something to this firehouse, and everybody brings a little something. He goes, if, you, if bringing something to this firehouse, besides, excuse me, what you do while you work here means that you get to play center field, that's what you bring. And you show up, and you, and you do that the best of your ability. So one day, I'm on second base or something, and somebody got a base hit, and I'm playing in, we're playing on blacktop now. So I, I score from, from, and I slide into home plate and I tear like, I, like I, I open up the whole right side of my yeah. butt and he even gave him the picks me up and says, Oh, you're going to fit in just fine here. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of effort. That's all we need is a little yeah, no, bit of effort. He says, he, what he said, as I'm walking to the, to the dugout, he goes, you're just dumb enough to, to hang around here for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> and, I said, okay. and that's, that's a, that kind of humor. It's kind of like, you know, I, I had gotten it already from being in sports and being in the locker room. So it wasn't really that foreign to me. That kind of boy mentality. That kind of the locker room mentality. mentality. Yeah. Locker room mentality. It wasn't, it wasn't foreign to me. It was, it was quite different because I was so far down on the totem pole i didn't get to participate a lot you know if in fact if some guy ranked on a guy really bad one of the senior guys ranked on one of the other senior guys really bad and i thought it was funny i got a couple of times what the fuck are you laughing at you know <laughs> that happened a couple of times. Like, i was like i wasn't even allowed to laugh you know not alone participate but it it, it was uh it was wow. cool. i was 21 and and loving it and and then they pulled out the rug. The I was going to say until seven one of seventy five, right? So take us yeah. through that. How does that happen when they get you when you get laid off? Uh, we had at that time there were twelve thousand firefighters on the on the New York City Fire Department. That's just the fire department firefighter rank. We had twelve thousand guys. Uh, the commissioner then, oh hey, Commissioner O'Hagan, who was also chief of the department, he was wearing both hats. Decided <coughs> that. Uh, every every commissioner had to go to his had to go to the mayor and make his make his peace for his agency. And O'Hagan went there and said, "Listen, I can do this job with nine thousand of these overzealous guys." And so we got cut down with twelve thousand guys on the job. They lined us. They kind of statistically lined us all up in seniority order. I was seventy four from the bottom. Out of twelve thousand, oh my so god! I, knew that was gone. I got a pink slip. I was one of the few guys that actually got a pink slip. I got a pink slip in May, and 
I knew I was gone come June 30th. The fiscal year ended, I was I was going to be out of work. And so they gave me every little bit. That was the first. When we got laid off, besides the actual camaraderie in the firehouse, that was the first real sense of the brotherhood that I got. I got every available overtime tour that was available wow. between May and, and getting laid off. I mean, because they knew that I was... You were going to be the money. Out of paycheck, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, but that was only the beginning of, the, of, the, of their generosity. Because while I was laid off, there were four of us laid off from 42 Chuck. Uh, myself, Tommy Kelly, Don Wasco, and Teddy Scott. They took, because now the manpower was down, they were getting extra overtime. They were getting a lot of overtime, the guys, because they had to make up for us not being there. I got, I got a check every two weeks from those guys' pockets. We all four of us did. Oh, wow. For the whole, for the whole time I was out of work. It wow. Of work. That's the brothers, man. <clears throat> it was, it was, and Huey McGavner, I lived in Parkchester at the time, and his, his mother-in-law lived down the block from me. So I would see him every once in a while. But it wasn't like he would stop by and say hi. So he, he, one day he says, you gonna, are you going to be home? And I said, yeah. And he, he came up to my apartment and gave me a check for, uh, for $120. I got $120 every two weeks from them. And wow. it basically covered my rent. They paid my wow. rent for the time I was laid off. Did you do anything yeah. else? Because I, I know that they, they hired some of the guys for, to be bus drivers, yeah, right? To, yeah, I went back to work. <clears throat> I sold insurance. I went back to work initially to sell insurance. But also part of the generosity and the brotherhood, uh, one of the brothers in 42 Chuck, Ray Mayone, at that time owned the Island Pub up at City Island, right down the block from the fire, right on Schofield Avenue. There. And he, his bartender was retiring. And he worked four days a week. And he gave each one of us a day a week. A day? In his wow. Life. I never worked in a bar in my life. I had no experience in a bar. And along those lines, I actually went to him and I said, listen, Ray, you live in a pretty, how should I put it, homogeneous community up there in City Island. <laughs> yeah. You think that they would be open to having a black bartender make drinks for them? And he goes... He says, I goes, because I, I says, I, I appreciate everything you're doing for me. I don't want you to just to cost you money. He goes, he goes, no, if they don't like it, F them. And I'm like, really? Okay. Wow. You know, so I did it and we, it worked out. Uh, I, I found out that people accept you readily when you're serving them alcohol. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's I didn't know you were going there. <laughs> It makes it really easy to get along, you know? He ain't yeah. lying. Drinks. Well, it's no, one or the other. Him. It's one yeah. or the other. Most of the time, it's either love or, like, falling off the cliff right the other way. Like, people are, yeah. you know, yeah. lover so, or fighter. Wow. That was, uh, so I, I went, I saw, I, I did that uh, for the entire summer that I was laid off. And then probably around September or October, I went to work, work selling life insurance because uh, I had some business acumen. Uh, marketing was a minor of mine at Baruch. I was a management major. And then uh, in January, they called me to drive the bus. And I drove a bus for 11 months until November. And then I went back to the fire department in December. Who, uh, who, gives, you the, who gives you the call to say, yeah, we're going to hire you back? And like, what was that uh, like? Basically, that was another thing. We came back on the, the, the job. The city was broke. So the union, and I give the union a lot of credit. Uh, Nick Mancuso was the Bronx trustee. Uh, Tom Riley was the treasurer. They were both uh, gurus of mine and helped me out a great deal. Uh, Mickey May Sr. was the uh, president of the union at that time. And they went straight to the powers to be in the state and, and the federal government and got us federal grants to, be, to come back. So, uh, so I came back when uh, they told me that we that they had grant money that I fit the bill for, and one of the problems was I had to be out of work for 30 days. So I had to quit the buses on Thanksgiving 
praying that I would get hired back on. Oh Friday. shit! We, didn't we so, hear this uh, as well from other guys? Yes. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember who yeah. else was telling us to who else got laid off and they got rehired on Christmas of. Uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody well, told well, us. I know Danny, Danny and I got hired back. Danny Noonan. Day. Yeah, Danny Noonan, and uh, that's his story. Another part of the story, but uh, we had to be out of work. You had to be quote unquote. You had to be a city resident. And you had to be out of work for 30 days to get the CEDA money. There was another uh, grant, uh, a HUD money. Uh, that was another grant altogether. And that's when the salvage trucks were born. They made trucks, HUD trucks, and along with the HUD uh, allowance came <laughs> the uh, the plastic, the staple guns. And all that <laughs> yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. That's how that happened, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how that yeah. happened. And so that's when I got the, I got the call. And I called Mancuso and I said, what if they, Nick, what if they don't reach me? And he told me that the bus company was holding my resignation until my uh, wow. being hired was. Ah, guys, uh, was doing the right thing back then. It's nice to know uh, that, man. They, it's nice I'm to hear you, that. I, I got. Listen, <clears> I got no beef with the, the UFA. Comes out of a lot of fire, and sometimes rightfully so. I still had health insurance. I was out of work. I was off this job for eighteen months and did wow. not miss a beat with health insurance because of the mm -hmm. UFA. Did you did you feel like in your heart that you were going to get back on the job, or did you you did. weren't one hundred percent? There was no never. there were no footprints, so we didn't know what was going to happen. Right. I didn't I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, we all prayed that we were going to get <coughs> uh, of course, but nobody had ever been laid off, so we didn't know. Yeah. Right. In fact, the uh, when you know I, I lived in Park Chester at the time, and that whole area. Park Chester, Morris Park, a very big blue collar area. Cops, firemen, teachers, a lot of municipal workers were living around there. So there was a big uh, crunch of layoff. So we all hit the unemployment office at the same day. So we get there, and there's a line like around the block. Some guy comes out and says to us, Are there any cops or firemen on this list? We raise our hand. He goes, Come around with us. To the side door, the usual side door thing for the. <laughs> so we're getting special treatment now. We had to wait there all day while they lobbied in Albany. We don't pay unemployment insurance. There was we had never paid into the pool. Oh so wow! Now we're, to, now we're looking to draw from it from money that we never put in. Right. So the legislature didn't know what to do with us. It was like, okay, we want to pay these guys, but where are we going to get the money? They never paid in. So they kind of gave us a waiver on that, and we paid it. They, we got unemployment insurance, but it was kind of scary there for a while. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. Even to get unemployment insurance. Now, when you come back, there's you don't go back to uh, 42 truck, right? They didn't send you. Yes, because they were a HUD truck, and I was a Cedar fireman. Oh. Ah. I could not go. I could not go back there. I was on a. I was on a two year grant, and I had to go someplace ah. else. And oh, I, that I, had to be horrible, part right? Part of that transition was I got I got put in a, the day I got uh, rehired, Christmas Day. I call. I'm assigned to the seventh division. It's a, it's basically a manpower pool. So I'm in a manpower pool in the seventh division. They put me in there. I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm figuring I'm going to go to 56 truck. I'm going to go to 27 or 52 truck. I'm in 52 truck uh, in Riverdale. 52, 52. Almost 40, almost 40 days. And at that time, I don't know what they're doing now, but at that time, they were doing nothing. Yeah. You know, and there were five of us sent there. Five of us, all under the age of 27, sent there. And uh, we told the captain, Captain, you know, nothing against your company. We don't even know anybody here, but we don't want to be here. Yeah. But we want to go back to where we are. And you know what he told us? I need you young guys here. I'm not signing your papers. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and we all looked at each other. What? what? What do we do now? And that's when Tom Riley came in. I said, Tom, you got to help me. He was the treasurer. And he was in 73 engine at the time. And he said, we'll see what we can do. And he got me to 43. And Oh, he yeah. did something all right. Oh, yeah. So, did, so you, you had to pick You had to pick a place? Or that was just, no, he just no, got you out of there just, and put I you just, there? 
I just wanted not to get, 52 yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, no, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't again against 52 truck. No, no, when you're young, nah, you know, that's what you want to do. 24 years old, uh, you know, and uh, he, he had a lot of he had a lot of senior guys, and some of them he trusted more than others. Let's put it this way: that's a that's a private dwelling area. I had all told the 21, 20, 21 months on the fire department. My first day back, without going to, to any other training, I had the roof in a private dwelling area. I, I had no idea what the roof man does at a private dwelling fire. Not a clue. Never been to one. We didn't have any of those on Prospect Avenue. Didn't right, know. right. But he trusted, he trusted me and another guy, Larry Welch, who was from 58 truck, or 49 truck. Larry was 49 truck at that time. He gave us the roof and the outside vent because he wanted us to have the radios. I was like, huh. okay. No. So, needless to say, you went to a bang up place, 43 truck, Spanish I Hall, right? I did. Yeah. I did. <clears throat> what was it like walking in there the first truck day? What was that? What was it like walking in there the first day? Uh, it was kind of, it was, it was a little bit odd uh, because I have to tell you, uh, I was still very connected to 42 truck. Uh, and we had a very good basketball team and we played the what they called themselves the firehouse five at that time they were mostly guys from the 10th 10th battalion uh and they were a pretty good basketball team and Artie Santangelo, well another one of my mentors who was in 42 he was very good friends with uh then uh the late Milton Rizica they were they grew up they were friends from very young firefighters together so we're playing them in basketball and Milty is all over Artie, like really abusively over Artie. So I feel like I'm gonna, I gotta defend Artie. So Tommy Kelly and I start abusing Milty Rizica, and I don't know who he is. And my first day in 43 truck, I walk through the door with my gear under my arm. He's the first guy I see, and he's wearing <laughs> captain's bars. Oh, and I'm like, shit. holy shit. I go, you are not the captain of the truck, are you? He goes, lucky for you, I am not. Oh. <laughs> that was my first day. He, he he did not hold a grudge. Oh, you know what it was? You know what? He, he, Milty went to NC State. And I had a friend who gave me some North Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, I got gotcha. you. And when we played them in basketball, I unbeknownst to me, I just wearing socks. And this guy's staring at me and giving me the side eye the whole game. Stink guy. And finally, you know, at the end of the game, he comes over to me. He goes, where'd you get those damn socks? And I go, what? I go, they were a gift from, <laughs> from a friend. He goes, he goes, you know, they're, they're the uh, elite. They think they're the elite. I'm, I had no idea what he's talking about. But apparently the state kids hate the, hate the Duke kids and the, and the uh, no North shit. Carolina kids. Because they consider themselves stuffy. I don't, know, I don't know what he's talking about. But I got free socks, got, bro. I got free, exactly, <laughs> yeah. free socks. Yeah. He was not the captain of the truck. He was only the captain of the engine. And I say that only because I dodged the big bullet there. Yeah, man. And, and what about uh, there? How long are you there before you catch your first good job there? <clears throat> uh, two days. Second All right. Wow. Uh, so the white cloud was lifted. Oh, yeah. The white cloud, believe me. After after the snit hit the fan in '42, the white cloud was lifted. I became like nobody wanted to work with me anymore, because the I guess the, the law of averages caught up with me, you know. Right. And I mean, that was the right time. '75. Holy shit! '76. Yeah, I get my, my brains beat in down there, you know. '76. And how much work were you going to in in '43 and '76? In '43. Yeah, during uh, those years, 76, 77, uh, 78. Yeah, we would we would we were doing we were doing a, a lot. Uh we we ran 43 had had a very uh unusual <clears throat> response area for me. 42 truck was like in a position we had we didn't have a lot of boxes. We had a, they did a lot of work in a very small area. They they because of the way the streets were configured, right. we didn't run for 43 on the other hand went Way up and down, we went. We were second due to four with fourteen all the way up to one hundred and twentieth Street, and second due to thirteen all the way at Gracie. Right, Street. all the way down, right. All the way down and all the way up. You know, so we we had a pretty good. And then our um, captain, 
who became the captain, uh, Danny Marshall, when 43 moved from 111th Street to 100 to 102nd Street on Third Avenue, we lost the Pleasant Avenue boxes. They gave them to 26 truck, and and Captain Marshall said, "You know what? We're not letting 26 outwork us. We want those boxes back." And he had weight, and we got the boxes back, and we, and it was. It was very productive. We did a lot of weight over there. We did a lot of work over there on Pleasant Avenue. Giving up a box, man. My good. That you can't do that ever, right? I mean, well, never. you know, the only reason they did it because they felt from 111th Street, of course it was ours. But then when they moved us further downtown, right? Picked up, what he did was he actually gave us boxes. We picked up boxes further downtown when we moved downtown. And then kept so the boxes the up there. The boxes back. Right, right, right. We the downtown boxes. Nice. But he was very shrewd. I like it. So uh, that's a great, you know, because you go down by a 13 truck. You now there's some uh, some money down there, some nice buildings, and you go back up oh, at the it? Harlem. So you had a nice diverse area of work. Absolutely. When the temp, when we ran before we became, before 43 became part of the 10th Battalion, the joke was when 43 went down, we were part of the 25 Battalion. When anybody from the 25 Battalion went down to the 10th Battalion, the, the chief would always tell us to wipe our feet before we went into the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. we were operating a whole different stratosphere, you know. Yeah, I worked so in sixteen had, truck. What's that? I worked in sixteen. I worked in sixteen truck for a little while. I got detailed okay. up to forty three pretty often. Yeah, yeah, that was a good house. So, now was uh, when you were on one hundred and eleventh. That, that was what one hundred and eleventh and what? There. I was never. No, they came to. They came to one hundred second Street in nineteen seventy five. Before I oh seventy five. Okay. They, I, yeah, that. That was a whole other thing because <clears throat> when they moved down, there was a whole crew of 111th Street guys. You know, ah. they they were like ah. the real, they they thought that they were the real 43 truck. You know, it was like a running joke. You know, not these guys, huh? Uh, no, that's the 102nd Street. That's, that's the 102nd Street. Yeah. Who are these that fellas? Was, the only guy. Well, okay, I'll go from left to right as I face him. That's that's Fred Hill, uh, who we lost. Oh my God! Cap yeah, captain yeah. of uh, two truck. Uh, next to him is Bert Woolley. Uh, right there in the middle, that's Tom Freed, who you probably know from Brooklyn. He was the captain of 108. Uh, and and that skinny kid, that's that used to be me. <laughs> um, and then there's Tom Clark. Fifty three. Uh, like, is that a forty three? Yeah. Or is it no, it's 43. Yeah, no, there's all 43 guys. All right. And then that's Dave Woolley, who we lost on 9-11. He was the captain of four truck. Oh, shit. So those two end guys <clears throat> lost on 9-11. Now, when you were in 42, was that uh, Sticks too, Ariel, or what was that? Was yeah, that... I've, never, I've never been in anything else but a real mount. Ah. Huh. That's my choice, of course. Ruffy likes the towel ladder. Oh, look at that guy. That's... that's uh. Frank Donnelly, who was, who was a good friend of mine uh, from way back, he was in uh, Squad 2 when I was in 42 Truck. And then he became the battalion commander up at 16 when I, was, when I got promoted in the 16th Battalion. He looked at my lock and he said, you can always tell what decade it is by the shape of my hair. <laughs> in, in, the, in, the, in the 70s here, it was round. It was rounded. In the eighties, it was eighties is square. Yeah, it was more it was of square, a punk type of thing, right? Right. And then, um, and that's now pretty it's funny. Just gray, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hey, pretty listen, funny. You still, you still got it. So, be happy. Yeah, right. It looks good, man. It does. Yeah. Look. yeah. Those are two. That's Tom Clark again. Uh, he was uh, also uh, a good mentor to me, and that's Walter Dugan, who basically uh, taught me how to be a chauffeur. Uh, I went to Danny Marshall had a, a theory that everybody went to chauffeur school. As soon, we had as many chauffeurs as humanly possible because his deal was we will he will never, ever, ever ask the battalion to detail. Send him a chauffeur, yeah. right? He wants his own guys. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So huh. everybody was a chauffeur. I was I went to chauffeur school like the <clears> second <throat> I turned first grade, and uh, Walter at oh, yeah. that time had get detailed to the battalion. So there were many a job where I had it. I was on the, I was on the uh, turntable, and he was in the chief's car, and he would kind of coach me and, and what to do, where to put uh, on aerial placement. He was uh, 
he was a, he was a very very astute chauffeur. Were you? And, and uh, great fighters, but Walter was hey, especially good at uh, driving. Yeah, Coops. Pa uh, Patty Lee was saying that that's uh, Hank Freed's father. Yes. Oh, it looks like yeah, him, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh shit! I just yeah. ran him in the I bank. He was a he was a he was a sock guy, right? Rescue yes, he two. Was. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rescue two. Yeah. Were you in the seat before you left? Yes, I had the seat before I left. That's that's uh, a good that spot, was, man. Yeah, coach. Yeah, put another, uh, uh, uh Petey, put on uh that one with uh Big Daddy there, Gary uh Gary, Gary Moore. Gary Moore. Yeah. Gary Moore. <clears throat> was he there when you got there? Or he came after that. This I can't even believe that's him in that picture. This looked like it was a little later in your career, though, with the outfit. Uh, I can no, tell. Yeah, he. This is this is Big Daddy. I think this might be his last tour before he goes to eighteen. Is that really? Right? That, might, that might be what we're that might be what we're, we're giving the present for. Because I was kind of, I became kind of like the master of ceremony up there. He was a funny so guy, man. I'm, I mean, I'm he pretty was sure freaking... that that's what that is right there. That's his last tour. I like huh. the Ashley Wash pants. Oh yeah, yeah look at you, bro. Seat. See, there you go. That's the '80s look. Ashley That's was, '80s, man. You were you were styling. The, hit, the, hit, the hair is the hair is square. <laughs> yep. I was gonna say this had to be late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, late '80s. Yeah. So Gary came to Squad 18. He was like, again, he was one of those old timers that, uh, you know, you know, we were all young kids when we what was that a dog went by? That was. Uh, yeah, that's. We were yeah, all. Yeah. We were all. Uh, yeah, what was that a dog went by? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my, that's my, that's my dog. Yeah. Oh shit! Big daddy. Uh, uh, what about you, Kirk? You had no interest in ever going to sock. No. no, I like it right there. First two works for him. That's it, man. No, you know, uh, I can just tell you a Gary Moore story. Gary Moore. Uh, one day uh, we're working. It's probably two o'clock in the morning, and he's he's coming up and he's giving us the whole sock thing, man. You know. Special operations, but you know, you know, he, he was a bigger than life character, you know. Yeah, special no ops, doubt, baby. Special ops, he's he's killing us with his special ops thing. <laughs> so I said, Gary, you remember that job where you had the irons, and uh, we turned the corner on 105th Street. It was the middle of the night, and a fire was blowing out the window, and and people were on the fire escape. He goes, yeah, oh yeah, I go, you'll never see that again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's you can kiss. You can kiss that goodbye, brother. Yeah, yeah. Work. You'll never see that again. Never see, see that he's quick. Great. Kirk is quick, bro. I love it, man. Did you? What were you oh, saying? We Somebody keep, was saying. Know, part of my career was half of my career was keeping Big Daddy in line. I mean, he was, you know. Oh was, yeah, he could skew off. He could skew. Oh yeah. Oh my god. We called it the gracious. Gary Moore Show. It was the Gary Moore Show. <laughs> the Gary Moore Show. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's so funny. But he was good. He was a uh, good man. We no, he was a good guy. I was saying, uh, you know, we were all young. I had, I only had five years when I went to sock, but he was one of the yeah. more senior guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cheese Man and uh, Norton, you know, those yeah. from 252. All those guys were, uh, yeah. you know, more senior well, guys. Was, you know, uh, I was, you know, it's funny because when he went to uh, 18, you know, I was uh, – Pretty good friends. I had I had known Jerry Tracy for a while, and he got to be the captain. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, "How's how's my guy making out down there?" And he goes, "He says he's fitting in fine. He's exactly what I needed." I go, "Really?" He goes, "He goes. So many of these guys are young and aggressive, and they, but they all have engine experience." He goes, "I have a, I have to, I need a guy that that has cut a roof before. I need a guy that's coming that climbed in a window off the fire escape before." He goes, "He goes. A lot of these guys don't have that experience. They, right? They're, they're, they're great firefighters, but they don't have that experience." Mm, right. So Gary, he, 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 Gary fit in there like perfect. Well, that was the same yeah. thing, Kirk. We were saying like uh, we had Hank and a, and a, you know Hank Mole and a bunch of those guys when they, when yes. we came to two eighty eight. So that those were the guys that we looked up to, and those were the guys yeah. who set us up, you know, uh, and taught us the ropes. You know, if you want to say that, and uh, you know, you yeah. needed those guys because we yeah. were all so young. You know what I mean? All of us yeah. were. There was a lot of young guys. You know, so. And, but, you know what? Everybody there. Everybody who was there wanted to be there, and they wanted to do the fire duty. Right. But, you know, sometimes that can be, you know, work against us if the guys are inexperienced. You know, somebody's got to say, whoa, that's not a good idea, you know. Yeah, right. If, you're gonna, listen, if you have too many refer, inexperienced I guys. Up, uh, can I make mention, uh, do we have the picture of Larry? Can we put that up? Yeah, for sure. Yes, of course. <clears throat> well, I'm, well, I find it. You can go ahead. Um Larry, 
Uh, actually, which picture was that? Because I don't have it labeled it's, as Larry. I sent you. That was a separate picture. Oh, the one. Uh, I sent it today. Yes, yes, yes. He, yes. He'll get it. He'll get it, Kirk. <clears throat> okay, no worries. Stand by. <clears throat> yeah, I got it right here. Here we go. Stand by. Uh, sorry, it's a whole other thing. No worries. It's a thing so with can, the thing. I can just say what I wanted to say. Yeah, I, absolutely. Uh, this is a picture of Larry, who uh, Larry Riley, who did 20 years plus in, in 53 and 43 engine and the part of Del Barrio's Bravest. He passed away on Monday, and uh, he was quite a quite a unique individual in many many ways. A great firefighter, two-time medal winner, um, and uh, he has a very unique niche, I think, in, in the medal book. It probably not written. Larry rescued two separate single amputees. Each guy he rescued only had one leg. And, uh, <laughs> At the same oh, job or different jobs? No, different jobs. No, two, years. Oh, two different medals, two different oh, years. Two different, two different medals. Yeah. Both, both guys had one leg. The wow, one of them, one of them wasn't Johnny Walters, was it? Oh no! <laughs> uh, come on. Larry passed away on Monday. Uh, that's too bad. And anybody who wants to, uh, his funeral on, is on Staten Island on Saturday. I don't have the particulars at my fingertips, but. You can call 53 and 43 for anybody who knows Larry and wants to come and pay. If you can, uh, if if you want to send me that, you know, during the week, here, we'll post it up on the fans page. So if you know people well, want to see, the, it, tomorrow's his wake. Today was his first day of wake, and then tomorrow, oh. is, he's being wake tomorrow and buried on. Is, is being All right, we'll, we'll try to get it. We'll try to put it up on the on the on the. I can do it tonight. Page. We can get it's it. Kirk, what did he? It, it, what did he pass away from? Uh, he passed away basically. Uh, was it cancer he, or something? Yeah, he was in poor health for a while, and I think he just kind of ran out of gas. You know. Uh, how old? How, how old was? Oh, yeah. Seventy-one. He was seventy-one years old. He was not an old man, old old man, but he he had not been as healthiest in the last few years, so he's had some issues. Right, man. Too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. Rest in, rest in peace, brother. BG to him, right there. Rest in yeah, peace. Yeah, yeah. I'm not hitting that button though on a. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Not for that. Well, Larry, hey, was, Petey, known we as, got, um... Larry was known as the lobster in the firehouse. Why is that? Uh, because in the sun, he turned beet red. Hold on. I just want to clarify something. A white Irish guy named Larry Riley turned beet red? <laughs> yes. I don't believe it. Fair skin, fair eyed, fair hair. And, I don't believe it. Never, oh my God! Didn't even know what sunscreen looked like. Didn't. Uh, yeah, that's but, not good. Kirk, yeah, what did you good. say when we were talking about BG? That fireman, or, or something about the obvious. What was that line that you used? You said, "Oh, humor is the uh, it, it, it's the humor of the obvious." Humor yeah, of the yeah, obvious, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, that's what but it's we, were, we were we were uh, you know in, the, in 53 and 53 we had clicks, and when I was when I was first in 43. Uh, I was in group 16. I was the, because I went to show school such a young part of my career. Uh, group 17 was the chauffeur's group. So I was kind of like the chauffeur's caddy. Like I would, you know, like I had to pick up his details because I would, if, I, if, I, if 16 was D1 and 17 was D2, I was D, D both, you know, uh, that was me. <laughs> yeah. And then I would take, you know, chauffeur details because I was the junior chauffeur. So, uh, but, Group 16 through 21, we we called ourselves the action groups because like we we were guys that always were into everything. We you know we, the doers. we never missed a party, we never missed a ball game. And and then uh Freddie Ill and Dave, they were part of the one to six gang, the original one to six gang. And a lot of firehouses have a groups like that. So later when I got the seat, I went to group four, and now I'm part of the one to six gang. Oh, so, you transitioned. Along with humor of the obvious, we were, we were one. Uh, Pat McFadden was in Group One. John Cologne was in Group Two. Tony Tomaszewski was in Group Three. I was in Group Four. Jimmy L uh, Gary was in Group Five, and uh, Big Daddy was in Group Five, and Jimmy Lanza was in Group Six. And we were otherwise known as the Irish guy, the Spanish guy, the Polish guy. 
the black guy, the tall guy, and the short guy. <laughs> you mean the BG? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there was the the obvious, you know, it was like oh. it, it, you know, it was like it, you know, there's you know, stuff like that would happen. Johnny Cologne, who was a uh, very proud Latino from from Puerto Rico, his family's from Puerto Rico. Uh, we were one day we have a stuck elevator and we have a man in there under and he's in duress. And so we, we're trying to find out do we need to get him out in a hurry? So we were on top, I'm literally on top of the elevator with the officer. And Johnny Colon comes over and he's the officer says to him, John, ask him how long he's been in there. And John looks down the elevator and goes, How long you been in there? And he goes, in Spanish, you idiot. Spanish? Hey, Pete, somebody posted the info, the funeral info there, if you want to put it across. Okay, great. great. Somebody, yeah. somebody put it up there. How about is this? Yeah, this is got Harmon Funeral that, Home, yeah. 571 Forest, Staten Island. Visitations tomorrow, 1400 to 1600. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, thanks Michael. Great job. Hey, yep. hey uh, Kirk, I also have that video. If you want to take a look at that video from 43 Truck when they made the uh, the roof rescue, I don't yeah. have, I mean, I we just cut it down just a quick thing just so guys could see it. It's, so, the, it's from the newscast, right? That is correct. Yes. Yes. Here we, here we go. Children blew off one of its two caps, providing kids with an unexpected plaything, but forcing firemen to depend on another hydrant down the street. The only fire hose then in use began coming off this hydrant. The hose had to be switched to the hydrant's other nozzle, causing a tough situation for firefighters on the other end of that hose, inside the burning building. Blew off the hydrant, blew us off the floor, we had to go back down to the landing, got water, we had to come back up again. And that's when he got trapped in a rear apartment. Captain Burns had become entangled in a room full of bicycles. He couldn't free himself, so he went to the window and radioed his roof man, Fireman Robert Hannon, to let him know he was trapped. Fireman James Sears was lifted to the roof by aerial ladder, after which Sears executed a textbook roof rope rescue. He came to the spot where Fireman Hannon was, you know, staying with me, and uh, he lowered him. So someone lowered him. Then he picked me up on a window, and we both went down. So, did a nice job. The, the grab of life. Yeah. If Fireman Sears considered himself a hero, he didn't show it. One of the brothers is stuck. You gotta go get him. Heat, humidity, broken fire hydrants, Look a dramatic life-saving rescue, all part of a day's work. As the driver of Ladder 25 shouted as he pulled away, take it easy, fellas. See you at a big one sometime. Nah. Washington wants a dinner there. See, see you at a big one sometime, fellas. Kirk, my, <laughs> hair, my, hair, my hair stands up when I see that, that captain getting... Misty eyed, you know what I mean? Like you could just yeah. see how well, uh, appreciative he you, is, you know. There's, what I mean? there's more to that story. He he passed away a few years ago, the captain. Huh. But uh, every year that they, they run this tape almost on the anniversary of the of that because his son is a big proponent. His son would come to the firehouse and seek Jimmy Sears out every year. Really? Oh, and thank him. And thank him. Uh Jimmy when Jimmy got the medal for that, uh, you know, you make the placket up, you know, we take it. We had this guy, Skip Panateri, who was a great artist. He did portraits great. We, we bought a piece of plywood and we, we put it up. Uh, it's still hanging in the firehouse to this day. And Skip painted it with a picture of him with, with the captain, you know, wrapped around. And he had the quote right under there. The brothers are in trouble. You got to go get them. That's so, great, and, man. That, everybody was like, so typical jimmy that's you know. and you said you just spoke to him recently right kirk i just spoke i spoke to him yesterday because he he and i and larry were uh <coughs> bad boy running buddies back in uh back in the day uh and uh, uh <laughs> so I, he, he is, he, Enough your, said, wife's in, your wife's in the background choose your words <laughs> she knows, carefully she knows, the deal. Uh, no. she knows what I've done. In fact, Jimmy and, Jimmy and Larry, let's put it this way. 
the night I, I met my lovely wife. My beautiful, lovely wife. Oh, my beautiful, lovely wife. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Why don't we, why, we hear you, but we can't see you, lovely wife. Where are you? Okay. I can, we can come. So, go okay. so anyway, Jimmy, I, Jimmy, Sears, Larry, and I were all uh, together. Sears, Larry, and uh, she has to bring the dog. Yes. Here we are. <laughs> I see the dog. Oh, there she is. Hello. Hey, hello. Hey, hey. You married Hit up. him, Coop. Hit Look him. That. Yeah, he married. You definitely you know. married Listen, up, brother. Good I job. I know all the dirt and all the stories. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hide anything from me. As you should. <laughs> Look at my words. Face. Look at his face. Let's put it this way: we we had gone to another firefighter's bachelor party that mm. that evening, <clears throat> and um, oh, the, when, the night we met. When people, when the night I met my my wife. And they said, uh, so guys, this is this became like a running bad joke. They said, so how'd you guys meet? How'd you meet, how'd you meet her? I go, well, you know, I met her after so-and-so's bachelor party. They go, you married the stripper? Why? Is that a bad thing? Is that horrible? I did not marry the stripper. I did not. Uh, but uh, yeah, Jimmy that frowned upon. And, uh, Jimmy was very close with Larry. They were like like the action groups. Uh, Jimmy was group nineteen. Larry was group twenty. They went everywhere together. Uh, and uh, Jimmy is now retired and living in Colorado. And I couldn't reach him by phone because he's hunting the elk in the middle of the woods. Oh, roofy. But, but we were able to get we were able to get a message to him via Facebook. So yesterday he literally hiked to the top of the mountain. To get, to get service, service to yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's the, the, How old is he, his... Kirk? Jimmy, he's got to be Jimmy up there, right? Than I am. Jimmy, Jimmy came on the job. Uh, we we have the same date of appointment, not the same year. He's November twenty fourth, nineteen seventy eight. So he's probably, and he was also twenty one. So Jimmy's probably mid sixties, sixty four, sixty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Do you get? Do you go back there still at all to forty three? Oh, all the time. I I, I, do. I live a half a mile away. From oh me. shit! <laughs> I live on ninety third Street. Cool. Get the free meal. Get the free <laughs> meals. No, no, no. Usually I have to buy the meal. Usually. Oh. <laughs> I, no. I try to tell, tell them. I'm on a fixed income for Christ. I'm on a fixed uh, income. Things are bad. Paycheck to paycheck. Come on, will you? We know listen, about that. Uh, uh, they. That was part of it. That's also part of my forty three story a little bit. Uh, when I moved here to 93rd Street, it really added, I swear, you know, I don't know if anybody has ever worked close to home. It it took away my commute, and it added 10 years probably to my career. Oh, yeah, I no doubt me, about it. I don't know if I've I done agree. 34 years commute. I agree 100%, Kirk. Uh, 100%. Let me ask you a big question. I, I literally, I can walk or take a bike. Did yeah. you show up early and on time, or are you one of those guys who look oh, no, no, close was, and show was, up late? It was easy, because... You know, when I first came on the on the uh, when I first moved to Long Island in my first marriage, I lived all the way out in Massapequa, and and I had to be on the road. Oh my God! For, forget it. By five thirty to make a day. Yeah, tour. forget it. And you know, I had to be on the road at three thirty to make a night tour. So yeah. now, the time that I used to be getting out of bed, be be get, arriving at the firehouse, I'm just getting out of bed, and I'm still there. Yeah, at no. Eight fifteen. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get out of yeah, bed. I get, we were trying to Yeah, we were talking about this. You know, it's always it seems like the guys who live the closest always come the latest, right, Roof? We were talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. that. was a joke. Like I used to, I used to tell these guys. You know, everybody's talking about you know their commute home. Like you know, at, at the end, most of us work catacorn at twenty four. You know, night into day. So we're leaving at six o'clock. It's like you know. You know, I, I would let guys go, but every once in a while, I like to, you know, break chops. So I would say, oh, man, it's 5 o'clock. I got to get the hell out of here. And go, what the hell for? I go, man, if I don't get that 530 elevator, I don't get upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I might hit the one stoplight. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I, and then I had, a, I had a deal. I had a bet. With, we were watching uh, a playoff game in the firehouse. And I was off duty already. And the game, I think, started at like 4 or 5 o'clock. So I stayed. It's almost the end of the game. And so I'm relieved already. And Dave Conley, he goes, you're going to stay for the end of the game? Well, no, I'm going to go home during the seventh inning. He goes, you're going to miss part of the game. Go, 
They go, oh, no, I was on my bike. I had a bike with me. I said, I can get home because I know during the seventh inning, there's extra commercials. They do God Bless America. It's usually, you know, it's about 10 minutes long, the, 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 the end. So right. I, go, I can get home during this, before they throw the first pitch in the, in the bottom of the seventh. <laughs> the eighth. Yeah, yeah, right. right. I go, I bet you 20 bucks I can. So <laughs> I'm on, like, in the starting blocks at the front door the minute the last out is made, and off I go. Running like a crazy, riding like a crazy person, and I get home. And at that time, we still had a landline. I can hear the phone ringing as I'm putting the key in the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I open the door, <sighs> pick up the phone. I, I catch my breath. I go, "Hey, Dave, how you doing?" And I, go, <laughs> hey, Dave, I can't. <laughs> hey, Dave, how you it doing? It took me about. It takes. It, it literally, if I rush and I and I got the right elevator, that's awesome. I could get home in under ten minutes. Nice, beautiful. So then, why did you even why did you decide to study? What could possibly I, creep into your head well, that you leave in a place like I that? Thank, I thank a couple people for that. Uh, Tommy O'Connor talked me into study. He was studying very, you know, uh, diligently for the ninety-seven test. So, so with about six months before the test, he said to me, "You need to get this a shot." So, you know, it took me a while to get my books together. I, you know, I, I basically didn't have any, I wasn't registered or going to any of the, the, the classes. I just kind of like piggybacked their study group for like six months. And I just missed getting going. I think the, the passing grade, the cutoff was 71. And I wrote a 69. And on that particular test, there were 13 changes. And you didn't I pick up any of them. I took that I test, none. Kirk. I, got I took that test, yeah. Yeah, I got none. And uh, so the next time around, I made up my mind. I was going to, if I'm going to stay, I'm going to study. You know, I was, uh, I was, uh, my divorce was final. Uh, I was going to get remarried. And I was going to, I needed, I needed to bump up my income a little bit. That's the only reason I did. And I had the opportunity to do it. I tell you, I give all the credit to guys that study with young children. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, it's not an easy thing, man. It's not it's, easy. It, it can't be easy because I studied basically in an empty apartment. You know, you know, my wife was at work. I didn't have any responsibility. How long did you study for? At least a year probably, right? Almost about 18 months. Almost two years. Yeah, two years. I mean, I studied for two years. longer because the test got delayed because it was supposed to be October of 2001. And then. Oh, shit. Then, yeah. When 9 11 happened, right. uh, it got pushed back to May of 2002. So, how'd you do on that test? You wrote the uh, beginning of I, it? I, I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote in 87. I raised my grade basically almost 20 points because I studied like I was supposed to. And right. then there were, two, there were two changes on that test. I got them both yeah. and didn't need them. Bingo. <laughs> Pissed me off. Because so, <laughs> then you had to leave quicker, I right? Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, quick. I, I was very fortunate. I was 133 on the, on the list. And then I was able to get. Yeah, but that's a nice thing, man. When you put the work in, I mean, 18 months, yeah. like I said, I studied. I know I studied around two years. I was with Brian Kenny. He was in my study group. I saw the oh, picture yeah, really? of him. Uh, yeah, so he was He's in my study group. In one se yeah, I know. In 117. But, uh, you know, we studied for a long time. And it was nice when you got promoted. It, you know, so when were you, you put still the, the work in. when you when you studied? Yes. So he was in my. I got there in ninety three. I think he got there probably like ninety five or ninety six. So you, you were one of those people tortured on the with the, the Captain Ruck the shell. What's that? Were you were you one of those people that when when Dennis Ruck the shell went there? No, I wasn't Ruck. there. No, 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 no. Oh, oh okay. No, he no, no. In, he was lieutenant in. Uh, in for forty three, he was my lieutenant. Oh, is that right? He was, yeah, yeah. He was also big in getting me to study. That's why oh. I, I kid. <clears throat> I had so uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Yakimovich. Jimmy Yakimovich, yeah, yeah. who's now inside. He basically did everything with my books except underlined them. He, he you know, he, he put my books together and, <laughs> and gave them to me. So uh, he, he was a big a good part. Pat Cleary, Pat Cleary, and I. Oh, and, Pat Cleary, I played hockey with him. Right, and Frank Macchia, we all team. studied together, uh, and uh, we had a routine that on on the practice tests, or practice questions, if you got five in a row right, you were genius. 
if you got if you got three in a row wrong, you're an idiot. So we, we used to bash each other. So when I get promoted, I get promoted, I go up, they, they call my name, I go up to shake the commissioner and the chief of the department's head. And and the, and, the, and my little gallery is all yelling, genius, genius. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my, my beautiful loudmouth wife is leading the cheer. Nice. My Pete, I think we got that picture, his uh, promotion. With, yes, it's the white right. face, the, the, the uh, well, everybody's <laughs> white. Well, the, the one with my wife is a better photo. Oh, okay. And that's the same day. Then, yeah, I like that one better. Outside later. Well, we uh, got to now. Now that you now you, you said whiteface, I have to show them both because uh, people okay, are going to go, yeah. "What the hell are you talking about?" But here, here's your picture with your wife, first and foremost. Yes. A beautiful. Yeah, you lady. definitely uh, you married up. Married there, up. Kirk. Good for you, Kirk. So did I. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's right. And then and then this one here, I was like, "Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> They're going to tell us that we uh that we're it's we're Patty, You can't even see his face. No, oh, yeah. it's probably better off. It, when we reproduce, <laughs> you know what? Every every time you reproduce it. It gets whiter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a great show. It, it's not a great shot, like the, the the original. But every time I take a picture of it with my camera, uh, with my phone, it got whiter. And now that you guys reproduced it again, it's even whiter. Oh, you shit. can't even see anybody's features in that. There's one. a yeah. secret to that. I'll show. I'll Kirk, tell you the you tricks. Want... I'll tell you the tricks. <laughs> Kirk, did you want to talk a little bit about Jimmy Lanza before we uh, move on at all? Uh. Jimmy is uh, he, he he has a big part of uh, in my life. You know, a, I have I have uh, I, I don't know if I I don't want to move the the camera, but on my little wall over here, we have, have a, a picture, picture of that wall. Of, I think the three forty three. No, not that one. That's oh. that's a per, that's my personal wall. Uh, but can I, if I move the screen, will that mess everything up? No. Uh, no. Hold on a sec. Let me just get this off of here. Go ahead. And I'll okay. Uh, zoom. Yeah. Okay. My wife's gonna help me with this. Don't touch anything. Take us off the air. Whoopsie. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. <laughs> Can you see? Uh, you gotta tilt Captain up. Freddie Hill. I see Freddie Hill. Come on down. Yep, I see the patch there with Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy Lanza. And the Twin Towers. I like it. Yeah, that's my friend took that. My friend's a photographer for National Geographic, and he took that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're hobnobbing. Kirk, you're Jimmy. Not... Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, I'm on the show now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all about uh, me now. It's all about <laughs> me. Trouble now. I like her. My, my wife is, <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I can't see you guys now. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, Lou, can you walk him through we that can one? see you. What do you want to do? What did he hit? Okay, now you're back. Now you're back. You, you got, got it? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, you Kirk, the... Um, though, my wife was actually a very short career of an on-air personality. So you might get a bill for what she just did. Uh, no. <laughs> really? Don't worry. We, we, you know, we'll take that bill and look at it. We'll look at it long. No. I'm going to tell the stories from a uh, firefighter's wife point of view. No, no, that won't be happening. That's another we had a, we, Listen, we, we had a wife show. We'll have another one. Oh, let's If she wants one. to come on. We had my oh, wife. Like we had, uh, yeah, we can have another wife show. Okay, Jimmy, let's do that. Jimmy was very special to me. Uh, he, had a, uh, he had an insight that not many people have. Uh, Johnny Cologne... Uh, Jimmy wanted to help everybody and anybody. We we actually Johnny Cologne actually named him the overbearing Samaritan because he would try to cross ladies across the street when they didn't want to cross. The, uh, we we go traveling together. Jimmy, first of all, Jimmy was only five foot four, and, he, and you know, like I said, humor of the obvious. He was damn proud as 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 as, as much as I embraced the whole BG thing. He embraced his. Uh, yeah, shortness. Being, yeah, yeah. Being short, yeah. And George here, who is uh, one of the uh, legends of 43 Truck, he made, <clears> he said, he said one thing's true about all short guys. Every short guy knows who he's taller than. <laughs> Coops knows That's that. That's me, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, you walk, you know, you walk into a room and go, I'm taller than that guy. I'm taller. Oh than yeah. That guy. 
<laughs> and you know what? Even if we're not, we'll insist that we are, bro. <laughs> yeah, so Jimmy, we always used to say that Jimmy, in every picture you see him, he could stretch his neck out like nobody's business. It was we called it. He was heightening. He, he'd be heightening. He was heightening. He was heightening. <laughs> Although, but Jimmy, had a, Jimmy had an insight to people like nobody else I've ever met in my life. Like, you know, he 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 saw the good in it. If you pissed him off, you you were, you were definitely were going to hell. You were evil. Right, you were because doing something wrong. If he was pissed he, off, if, you're doing something wrong. I mean, we'd be we we'd be in the kitchen. I mean, this is you can remember we were in that kitchen through some of the, the most horrible times you know in the in the world. In the, Gaddafi, you know, uh, uh, Idi Amin, and Jimmy would go, Jimmy always found, go, Idi Amin, uh, you know, he probably had his, he probably had his moments of, well, really? Christ, he was, he, he's a murdering cannibal, for Christ's sake. Hitler, Hitler. yeah, you know, he probably yeah, was, but, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Family, you know, he has a family, I'm like. Yeah. He's got a family. <laughs> he really he's loves his too dog. Nice. Just too nice of a guy, too nice. He was, he was, he, he, he was unbelievable, Sweetheart. but he. But he, but he had uh, a real gift for uh, trying to see the good in people, and 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 so now in his honor we have uh, uh, a, like a little bit of a fun, and we call it "What Would Jimmy Do?" And uh, we've had a golf outing. We had we've had four golf outings in his name, and each like year it. it gets bigger and bigger. This year, uh, I hosted it with with help from a, a lot of people uh, from forty three and fifty three and. Uh, People Let me know, general. Kirk. I'll play. And uh, yeah, we had 172 people this year. Wow, that's great. And uh, we raised after after expenses, we raised twelve thousand dollars. We gave uh, five thousand dollars to the Silla Foundation for some hurricane relief money, and we're gonna give five thousand dollars to uh, uh, Jimmy's uh, baby, which is the uh, the uh, uh, Family Transport Foundation. Him and Danny Prince will, they were like Mutt and Jeff on, on that. Is that issue. right? Yeah, yeah. Danny Prince, he's yeah, a huge yeah. man. We're trying to get him on the show, too. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and then we gave $2,000 to uh, the 10th Battalion Scholarship Fund. So, uh, you Good know, stuff. The, the, brothers, the brothers and the members have been very, very uh, generous. And, nice to see that you're you know, still involved, Kirk. It's really cool, man. Well, yeah, I, I work, I also do some, uh, some volunteer work with the with the counseling unit and also uh, we call I'm, I'm one of Tommy O'Connor's uh, a crew and he he, uh, he gets us to do work with uh, Frank Silla and the uh, Silla Foundation for 10 years we, we after Katrina we, we did a toy drive uh, down to uh, to the Gulf region and we gave I, I think he said I was talking to him just last week about it 76 truckloads of toys we delivered. Wow, that's everything. cool, man. Good for you. So, it's, it's, Great job, it's, bro. Uh, and then, and Jimmy was always a big part of that. So, we try to keep up his legacy. Uh, we, we, you know, one of one of the best Jimmy Lanza uh, things was we used to do because when we traveled on these uh, missions of mercy, if you will, is that we all, you know, we all had our luggage and everything together. And there's always some woman who's too short to try to get her luggage in the overhead compartment. Mm -hmm. And we wait to see Jimmy pop out of his seat. And to try and put be, it in there. They, he would be just as short as she would. But the two of them now were pushing his legs. And we're just sitting there watching. And, and normally, one of us would get up to help. But it was just too entertaining. You, know? he, you knew he was going to go first. You knew he was oh, going to go first. You knew he was going to do it. Yeah, right, he right. He was going to do it. You know, before so, we get uh, you know, into he, the weeds. He's, he's, he was a great man. We lost him to a nine related 9-11 related. Uh, yeah, not too long ago. Uh, four years. Four years ago. Is it that long already? Holy mackerel. Yeah. Wow. This, is, this is our fourth Jimmy Lanza golf outing, so wow. it's got to be at least that, that long. Got to get in there and swing it, Ruffy. So, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll, let, we'll let you know. I'm in. We'll, we'll keep yeah, it on our mail. We, we sent out the, uh, an email blast to uh, you know quite a few people. and you know Jimmy was – everybody tries to give me credit for the visit. I said I did the easy part. I put Jimmy's uh, I put Jimmy's picture and name on the front, and everybody showed up. Yeah, because if so, they know him, that's, that's it. a testament that's to him. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, no it doubt. Is. It's definitely no yeah, doubt. Yeah. Petey, so, what do you want to say, Pete? Yeah, just before uh, <clears throat> we get too deep in the weeds, because we're getting you know we're getting to almost about that time pretty soon. Um, 
I wanted to show one photo of you and maybe you could tell us the story about this one in particular. That's a 43 truck one, I think, right? Yeah. 43 truck. Yeah, man. Naked Seven. the grab. It wasn't a grab. It was a fine because that child didn't survive. So oh, no. Uh, December 28th, 1983. Uh, we were uh, first due because 13 and 16 were out. That fire is all the way down in the, I think it was in the 70s. It was, a, wow. it was the low 80s. We were, it was a long ride down on the, down Lexington Avenue to the fire. And we, you know, we get a lot of reports on the, on the radio about people trapped. And we, we, we tried to do uh, the best we could. Uh, I was, I had the irons and uh, it was a uh, townhouse with uh, the, there was a, a man doing brickwork and I think he was doing some blasting or something uh, to clear the brickwork. Something was going on. He was working with a torch. I don't know if it was plumbing or whatever, but the, the room caught, the living room caught fire and it, and it, the Christmas tree was up and it spread. Really, they had a big Christmas tree. I'm, I'm talking about the 12, 15 foot. This was a gigantic townhouse, maybe a 20 foot ceiling. So they probably had a tree in there. It was about a, 12 feet tall and very full and it really fueled the fire really a lot and to his credit the guy who was working with the torch went upstairs and tried to find these kids and he wound up perishing oh wow in, a, in an upper bedroom he how died. many kids how many kids were there Kirk? we lost two kids that day and did you grab did any of them make it out or they no no oh, what a lost. shame Nobody made it out. Uh, he, but he, but he, he was the real hero. Trying to, he gave it up. He, he, he could have, he could have bailed. Yeah, he was no doubt. And got out the front door, but he didn't. Wow. He went upstairs, uh, Oof. and he, he, he perished up there. But Same. that, I, I, you know, I got uh, to rear bedroom pretty quickly, and I, uh, I found that, I located that child. And then I, I would, that picture was me getting them to the ambulance. I, I mean, who knew I mean, I'm, I'm out there and I just grabbed it and ran to the ambulance. And the next thing I know, the next day it's on the front page of the paper. Uh, but wow. it was not a good day. <clears throat> no. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. That's yeah. rough. Well, I'm almost sorry I asked about it, but. No, I mean, yeah, listen, no. this happens. It's the reality of the job. Unfortunately, it's the reality of the job, correct. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, so let's move to 30 truck, man. You get promoted in uh, 07, right? And uh, yes. you're bouncing a little bit? or uh... Uh, That's a big joke because I got I – got, let's put it this way. I got made on December 7th of 2000 uh, and, <laughs> and two. I took the test in May of 2002. Got made December 2002. And had a spot by April of 2002. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said to these guys, what's with this bouncing? Everybody bitches about this bouncing. Everybody crying. <laughs> you know, I, covered, I, covered, I literally covered. And you landed at 30 truck for God's sakes. No, I, I literally, I never, I, I covered zero. Because, I mean, listen, I had 29 years on the fire department when I got promoted. So mm. they, they. They, they had mercy on me and took good care of yeah, me. Yeah, no, it's good. Well, that's what I, it's I supposed right to be, right? I did. I went right out of uh, – I didn't even go to flips right away because they the 140 of us got made. They took the senior 70 of us and put us in, in into firehouses. On Thursday, I was driving 43 truck, and on Sunday night, I'm the officer in 166 engine. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I, I, you know, I felt like Cleveland Little and Blazing Saddles. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm <laughs> But they were good to me. Uh, a lot of a lot of guys that had done time in Brooklyn. Uh, and uh, my chauffeur, I don't remember his name, but we had a run. It was light snow on the ground. He was and doing the runs donuts. Were far apart. He was driving very fast. And I was like, so we get to the box safely, thank God. So I turned to him and go, so where in Brooklyn did you work? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
getting at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Slow down. <laughs> yeah. But uh, without saying it was like, it was like ninety. I did. I, did yeah. I, I got set. I did. A, I did. A, I got promoted in December. I did. I went straight. I did vacation in twenty nine truck. Uh, then when that vacation was up, I bounced for a whole two weeks. And then I went to 69 engine UFO. Uh, wow. And then, I, and then I got a vacation. In, and then, uh, no, I got, a, I got a vacation in 30 truck first. And then I got Brian's vacation in 30 truck. And then I went UFO to 69. And then I got appointed to 30 truck. So That's it was awesome, a, man. A very, it was a very long four months of. Uh, oh, man. It's, that's a torturous, torturous yeah, four months. So, <laughs> so, so, listen, you know what the question is going to be. Who, I know what you're going to say. What's that? Who, who was your chauffeur in 30 truck? Wait, 30? Yeah. Oh, Nick. Keep Nick mm. Yeah. My man. <laughs> Dude, we were down in Jersey in Wildwood at a show. And I swear to you, 20 people must have come up to me and dropped that name. Oh, yeah, I'm friends with Keith Nicolello. Oh, yeah, I'm friends with Keith Nicolello. I'm like, holy crap, what is this, the Keith he's Nicolello show? He's Jersey and Sinatra. He's, <laughs> is it? Is that yeah, what it is? Every once in a while, we would get relocated, like, to 36 truck, and he would make us, like, go to the GW Bridge and just look across the water for, for a couple of minutes. Like, he would just sit there and get misty-eyed looking at the <laughs> <laughs> Misty eyed. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, I can't. But he was a big help to me because I was I was not new to the fire department, but I was new to the rank. And you know, it was very difficult you lose him? uh sometimes. You guys can't hear me now? Can you no, we got you. We got you. We got you now, yeah. I just tell you one quick one. I'm UFO in sixty nine, right? So Jimmy Carney, who's the senior man in sixty nine, is driving me. And he says to me, Kirk, I know you want to go to the truck. You have your paper in for 30, you, you know, but we, we would really love for you to stay here because we need a guy like you who's been around. I go, hold on a minute. I have not been around. I walked through the same door for the next for the last 25 years. That's not counting as being around. And I right. said, I've done 30 years in this job, every one of them with a red front piece on my head. I said, he goes, what are you talking about? I go, I got a, I got a very basic engine question for you. He goes, what? I go, okay, but we got, we're moving down the hallway. How close do I get to the nozzle without being in the way? He goes, <laughs> I goes, I'm serious. I said, I seen I seen officers get their helmets blown off by the nozzle. I go, right. I don't want to be that guy. Right. You know, they're putting the fire out. I'm fishing around for my helmet. I don't want to be that guy. He goes, You really don't know anything about the engine. I do not. I go, I do not. I know that I've had the pipe a couple of times. I know how to do that end, and I know how to do the other end when they give you the control. I said, right. that end. Everything in the middle is foreign to me. And my first job in 69, we get a fire. So on the second floor, the line comes up really fast. The truck has already popped the door. Now they're working on the adjoining door. The fire is right at the door. You know, I'm standing there, and, and I hear the nozzle man says, we're ready, Lou. So I push the door open. Fire blow. He goes, we're ready for water. I go, oh, shit. Holy shit! Okay, Kirk. I go shit. You're afraid. You got to ask for it. They don't know. You know what? It's alert. Listen, that's a trucky through and through, right there, bro. Oh my god, Almighty! That's freaking. I love that. Ready for water? You know, that's perfect. You know what? I see that. I mean, I listen. I could see that happen. You know, there's no doubt about that. You know. Yeah. I thought you were going right in there just now. Thank God. Thank God we were able to get the door closed. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't push it. I didn't push it too hard. Uh, and then, then you call for water. That's great, water. man. So, so yeah, yeah can, Louis, just check the, check the messages, Louis, real quick. This, did you? Uh, this, this was yeah. a great one for me. Uh, I was blessed to be in the right spot at the right time, always. 42 truck was a perfect spot to be born in. Uh, right. 43 truck was a great spot to grow up in. And 30 truck was a great stop to, to grow old in and finish. It was, uh, you know, it, it, I, I can't, you know, the, the, the fire department's sarcasm is a, is a great thing that we use for journalists. So uh, one minute, I saw a guy down the medical office one time and he recognized me from, I was also teaching the EEO class at the end of my career. And I was just, 
I did a detail to the council unit, and he said to me, so Lou, you know, I, I know from the EEO class, where did you work? So I said, well, I got assigned to 42, but I did most of my career in 43, and then I finished it in 30 truck. And he looked at me, he goes, Jesus, it's, it's, it's a shame you didn't get to work anywhere, huh? <laughs> we didn't see any fire. Nah, no yeah. fire. Yeah, it's games. Yeah, yeah. He goes to me. He goes to me. Well, I go. Listen, it, 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 you know, it, it, you, you kind of take it for granted. You know, I was so blessed, but in hindsight, I can see that now. But uh, then, I, you know, I just that was the place where I worked, and we just, as guys told me, you know, you're in a great place. Try not to mess it up. Right. Yeah, yeah, no up. doubt. That's, Kirk, every that's every time I talk to somebody when I when when we get guys for the show, I really I say that all the time because when you're going through it, it's probably anything. When you're going through it, you really don't realize how special that time is, right? Until you look back, you know, yep. at not not only where you worked, right, but you know the guys. Like we don't give accolades, right? We break balls, we do all that well, shit. But now when you look back, you know, and that's what the show is about is really listening to you talk about you know jimmy lanzer and all those guys that you know all the all the guys that you mentioned that's important because that's the best part right i mean that's yeah. because firemen don't do that and to get that out of guys like real real guys that's that's to me is is my favorite part of the show when when yeah. i came to uh 42 uh, besides the captain telling me we've been waiting for you there was a guy who was still in the roster john mckenna uh he was a great guy all of his 35 years in 42 truck uh, through, through the war years, wow. all through, like, serious war years, all through 35. And he was still on the roster, but not there anymore. He was, on his, he was one of the last guys in the fire department that after 35, he got full pay. Oh, wow. He, was, he didn't live a long time to enjoy it. But I remember Joe Curry coming up to me. He says, he says you know, I feel bad. I feel like I'm dragging the, the seniority down around here. And he goes, no, 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 we're good. We'll be good for another couple of months. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, well, but Kenna, and you average 17 years. I go, yeah, he has 35, you have none. So, <laughs> 17 years. So you, 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 well, he ain't wrong. Math is right. Is right. <laughs> no, no, math is perfect. Is and that was another thing. I, I'll just touch that quickly, but, but Kenna, 42 truck to celebrate his retirement, they gave him a plaque, a weekend away, and a boat because he, he loved to fish. And when I got home, uh, I was still living at home then. My my dad says to me, "Oh, so how was the party?" I go, "I go." They gave him a boat. I couldn't. I I, I couldn't get past it. Wow. What do you mean they gave him like a real like a boat? A boat. A boat. Like a, a boat. Like a boat. Twenty foot. A twenty. I'm kind of with a motor really and everything. I'm kind of pissed off. I didn't go to forty two for God's sake. Yeah, you didn't get no boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thirty. Wow. Yeah, so that was that was a blessing and. These things come full circle because one guy told me, and I don't know how true this is, so if somebody can correct me, if this is not accurate, please do. Uh, one of the guys, when, when, they, when I was retiring, in 43, when you leave, if you do 20 years and you leave, uh, retiring or promoted, you get an axe. And you get a silver-plated axe if you did 20 years. If you do 25, you get a gold-plated axe. So... Somebody said to me that I was the first guy to get a gold-plated axe that didn't retire. That I got yeah. a gold-plated well, axe to get promoted. And got promoted. It got promoted. Because nobody's ever stuck 25 years here and then got promoted. And I was like, really? And I, <laughs> I thought about it. I go, a trailblazer, I don't, know, I, don't know if that's, I don't know if that's an honor or a dubious honor. I'm not sure. But it took <laughs> I like me dubious. Honor. I like that. I, I like that. I like dubious. dubious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I don't think I've ever used that word, but I, I'm no, not sorry. I'll use it now. Hey, uh, are they still are they still doing work up there? You know, with that area coming back now, or uh, they 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 are. It's not as uh, intense as it was back when the area was trying to be rebuilt. Because back in the in the eighties, we had we had a lot of awesome for profit. Right. So uh, we, we actually were one of the uh, satellite units for the for the. Uh, the marshals hanging out because we had so many hot boxes that were because this is they people saw it. This was an up and coming area in the upper nineties and the low hundreds that that uh, they were going to change over from El Barrio to uh, as uh, as they they called it uh, a, a Broho uh, above uh, ninety 
96th Street was gonna was gonna come back. So there's a lot of us awesome for profit. So we did a lot of work then. This, but they're doing a ridiculous amount of running. I think. Yeah, yeah. They, a lot they, of, everybody's they, doing they, they that now. To, the engine and the truck probably did close to. Uh, I think between the four companies and uh, 53, 43, 26, and 58, they probably did 25,000 runs. Oh yeah, so, I won't believe it. Yeah, easy. It's a lot of running, man. So we only and 43 always. Uh, the thing we have to learn is every year, no matter what, how many runs we do, we always have to do one more than 26. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, I love that. I love it. That's impossible to fudge anymore because of the computer. But yeah, 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 days, yeah, 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 yeah. In the yeah. old days, Captain Marshall and Captain uh, Cantillo used to call each other like on Christmas Day. How many runs you guys got? How many runs you guys got? So there was one. Christmas That's Eve, fun. one one New Year's Eve, we, we did two hundred and forty runs in one Christmas, one New Year's Eve, so that we so that we could outrun them. It was like, it was like, Captain, you know, because you could put any number you wanted on the. He just he he did what he had to do, just so we could outrun them. And we I think he he figured it out. We beat them by twenty runs or something like that. And uh, their captain was very. How upset. many runs were you doing back in the day there? About the same that they're doing now. Between five and six, but yeah. you know, we probably topped out at, at close, uh, in the, by five, fifty five hundred. Yeah, you but know. you catch them more like, of that was fires. More yeah, of that it was, was work. Work. mostly fires. We probably, right. we probably were between forty five hundred and, and five. Right. You know? I, but I, you know, you know, we didn't really, we didn't really, you know, we did a lot of emergencies because we had a lot of public housing. You know, the engine called us the oldest elevator company. You know, they. Mm. We we actually got really good at doing elevators when we went over to the rock for an elevator drill. We actually showed them some stuff that we yeah, knew it's that, good that they hadn't because uh, and they showed us about commercial buildings because when we started going downtown for bad elevators, they don't kind of want you wrecking the door and yeah, yeah, yeah. frown upon Listen, that a little bit. Well, you know what the thing is when you wreck the door inevitably it gets stuck again right so you're actually doing harm yeah. to yourself because then you got to go back there i used to say all the time try not to break the door because they you know yeah. housing is going to come they're going to fix it it's kind of going to be half-assed and you're going to come back anyway so it's always better to try and you know the the keep... tool that they use the z tool now they use to yeah we we, we you know who showed us that the kids in the projects yeah yeah that. yeah yeah right yeah 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 no they, i believe they, it yeah, the kids in the project showed us that because they would go to the first floor and do that and jump down the shaft. There was always a couple, a couple of dollars down there. Yeah, there right. Exactly. Ah, wow. That would fall down yeah. the crack, right? Yeah. It's awesome. But All right. All right. Was, uh, it, was a, it was a perfect way for me to end. It was. Yeah, I would say. Great, great place to, to finish great out. Great place to end. And uh, uh, like I said, I was, I, I was very fortunate. I was always in the right place at the right time. And... Uh, being around the right people. I mean, the, this job has been taught me so much about just you know being around people and doing the the next right thing. And uh, you know, the, I I don't think I, I don't think that anybody has a better way of policing each other than this job does. Keeping you know guys that get or people that get honest. in the line a little bit. Yeah, yeah keep just, them honest. Just bringing them back in the fold. You know. Uh, I think yeah, that might guy. that might be losing that a little bit. I don't know. Like I think that's yeah. Because uh, some of it is some of it is PC. Some of it was not necessarily PC. You know. Right. Right. I mean, you know, you know, in '43 we had a thing. You know, everybody had their picture on a headshot on the back room, and uh, if you acted up uh, in a bad way, you got the toilet seat hanging over your picture. <laughs> and you didn't want the toilet seat. No. You know, and you kept the toilet seat until somebody else earned it. And you could keep it for a long time. Yeah. Nobody else acted out. But the great thing about the toilet seat or, or that, you know, you go to your next fire and you're an all star. That seems to go away, right? I mean, you Hold can. On, somebody's going to take the pressure off you. you somebody's going to take the pressure off you. The, you. Correct. Keep the toilet seat until somebody else earns it. <laughs> Correct. No, no, yeah, right. Toilet, you don't. You don't. Just because you do never, good. It's never a new, it was never a neutral spot. Like Correct. I agree. Until correct. Until somebody, somebody had to screw up. Correct. What? There's always somebody right there to take oh your place. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't take, take long. long. No, it won't take, it take long. Uh, no doubt. 
Uh, so are you ready? Are you ready to impart on these young guys your words of wisdom for the old school tip of the day, fella? Uh, is, is it a life? Are we talking about a life experience or a firefighting tip? How Anything you want. The old school tip of the day. Well, we have to bring we have to prime you up first. Pete. Yeah, yeah. First up. first and foremost. Hold on, Hold on Kirk. Yeah, we got We do this in a very special way. Okay. I know you haven't seen the show before. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the old school tip. Oh, <laughs> look at this. The look day. At his face. Look at the smile. The day. The day. <laughs> oh, and it's a close up, Mr. DeMille. Here you go. So, oh, so Kirk, so okay, uh, all right. First of all, in in the uh, socially, this is this is the greatest brotherhood and sisterhood now on the face of the of the face of the earth. Do not let any of the uh, nuts and bolts of sometimes try to break that up because the people are what makes this job great, and uh, you have to keep that in mind. But on a firefighting tip, the it's always good to practice what you're not very good at. And one of the things that was always hard hardest for me as a firefighter was learning how to come in the window opposite the line. Because think about it, when you when you're in the when you're on the entry team, there's a natural path to most apartments from the front door throughout the apartment, from the living room to the bedroom. It's a natural path. So your brain can really even with no visibility can find that the first time i had to climb in a window uh at a fire a smoky window i i i put my foot on a dresser took another step and fell flat on my back uh the the room is backwards so whenever you can at drill this goes out to anybody and everybody practice that backward search because it's it's probably the hardest thing we do if you you know if you drop down that rear fire escape, or if you come off the aerial ladder, it's the hardest thing I think that we do as as in the truck, and where I spent most of my career. It was the hardest thing to get used to, uh, and I think that you can never do it perfectly, but there's ways to. There are tips that you'll learn that were taught to me, like you know, just think about your room in a backwards fashion, and that'll help you when you can't see anything. You know, uh, when you when you feel the, the the head of the bed is usually against the wall, mm. crawl down to the foot of the bed. That'll take you out the room. The, the, this, you know, crawl across the foot of the bed. It'll usually be towards. It'll be the the opposite. If you mm. think about the way your house is laid out, the foot of the bed across the foot of the bed will take you towards the, the doorway to, out of the bedroom. It's it's almost 100. percent That's the way I was taught, uh, and like they teach you at the Rock, if you if you feel it, if you feel a television, there's usually a chair or a couch opposite it, you know, and uh, that'll that'll show you the way out, and because it's the hardest way, it's very hard to find your way from the, especially in, in an old law tenement where it's a railroad, it's not too bad, but in an old law tenement when it's a, kind of a strange configuration. Uh, one wrong turn and yeah, yeah you could be anywhere. The front door, you're, you're in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that, that's my tip. You know, Lou, nice. do a great job, bro. I, man, I, I Lou, I, I mean, twenty something years. Uh, let's say the forty something years between the two of us. Sock all the guests we've had on. Nobody has ever. I don't think I've ever that. heard that. No, I've I, never I heard agree. that. Really. And as he's talking about it, I'm thinking to myself, well. You know what? I like that uh, that idea because it is. It's not an easy thing to come in through the window. No, like you know what I mean? Like the you said, natural pathway is to come in the front door, and that's the way you go, right? That that's right. A, Lou. Amazing, great job. Really, something so simple, so profound. Amazing, right. really. Listen, and I just want to. I can't take total credit for it. I did not make that up. It was. It was just a tip that was passed down to me. No, that's uh, what we want. When, that's what we want. When I was in forty two truck. And then when I came to 43 truck as a young firefighter, the first time you get the OV, that's exactly what they, that's exactly what I was wow. told. The room is backwards. It's like searching in the, searching into the mirror, you know, it's backwards. Yeah. You know? And Great I learned job. the hard way. Like I said, I climbed in the window, stepped on the dresser and fell on my back, fell right into the room. <laughs> and that could be dangerous if that room is hot. No, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're always slippery. They're always <laughs> slippery, fall, those things, right? fall in, that could be a problem. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say. No, yeah. no bueno. Great job. Lou, thanks for coming on. I really enjoyed you. I knew it was going to be great. Thank you for having me. Uh, I, I hope I wasn't too boring. I mean, you guys. No, are you no me? not at all. You're, prodded, Come on. you're, you're, you're a good prodigy. And the, the questions, it's, it's really good. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, somebody uh, enjoyed it out there. Uh, did the chat, the chat light up at all? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah you know, absolutely. About it. Tell you, yeah. We can read uh, it after, uh, after the show. We'll read it to you. You can read it. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Lester. Now, great podcast. You, great I, guy. Uh, how do I go on your site and see some of the. Uh, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about after, it. Just stay on. When we, when we come out, stay on. We're going to. Yeah. And then okay. uh, we're going to yeah. go off live and then uh, we'll take care of that. So stuff. now, uh, yeah, we'll so uh, call uh, call Big Mac and tell him it's it's not so bad. He'll be all right. Oh, no. You're going to love him. Yeah, <laughs> he, he is. He, he is not only a great firefighter; he is a big time personality. Yeah, all big right, good. And ask him. Ask him. Don't forget to ask him about his ring size. My wife loves that. Yeah. My wife, when I first went to thirty, <laughs> Jimmy Mac wears a size eighteen ring. Eighteen. That's, a big, what? Well, that's why they call him you big. Know what they Mac, say about right? that with big hands, big oh, rings, <laughs> big gloves. Like, unbelievable. <laughs> I Excellent. thought I had uh, I thought I had a big ring at twelve. Jeez, eighteen. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a size eighteen. There's some sausages, so, bro. My wife calls him. My wife sees him. She calls him eighteen. 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 So I call him sausage, sausage fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Petey, take us out, brother. Give us okay, a little. Okay, just. Uh, just oh wait, wait. Do we have any this. shout outs? I have a shout out. I'm sorry, I to interrupt you. Do you have a shout out, Ruffy? No. Okay, I got one. This is uh, this has come from uh, one of our guys, A L M. Uh, Michael in the chat, his chief JD Howell of Mill Creek Fire Company passed away at the age, young age of fifty-four from cancer. So, rest in peace. Rest in peace, brother. Rest, rest in peace, peace, brother. Yeah, man. All right, now you can All take right, it. Uh, yeah. Well, I, you know, actually, just real quick, uh, I was cruising this morning at six thirty. I think I saw it was one thirty-six on the LIE over there in in Maspeth or right around there, or no, right mm -hmm. around the. Uh, not massive, but it was it, they were they were ripping down the uh, service road. So shout out to them boys. So whatever the hell you were doing at six thirty this morning, for crying out loud, uh, and shout out to Rescue One, whose quarters I drove by the other day, and the rig was out, and they were uh, they were working on the rig. So nice. shout out to them boys. It was really cool to see the uh, the rigs out working and all that good stuff. Uh, in the meantime, guy. In the meantime, guys. If you're watching this podcast, you should also be listening to it. Uh, our audio version, of course, is on iTunes Podcast, Spotify, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found. Subscribe there. It's free, you cheap bastards. It's free. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> also, if it's free another, for me. Exactly. You know it, and uh, if you are into more subscribing, because subscribe right here on youtube.com forward slash getting salty experience, where again, it's still free, you cheap bastards. So uh, subscribe here as well. If you're on Instagram, guys, we're at Salty Dog Inc. on there, where Mr. Refrano will curate the finest fire photos in the game. Salty, old school. Uh, very cool. And uh, guys, gettingsaltyapparel.com. That's how we pay the bills around these parts. Uh, all the coolest firefighter apparel and uh, accessories in the game. Also, guys, thank you to everybody tonight in the Super Chat. The Super Chat was lit up. We appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you for not asking uh, uh, the lieutenant if Joey Babats was a friend of his because that's a yes or no <laughs> question, and I'm sick and tired of it, and that's it. So it's a personal gripe, but thank you. Um, also, guys, uh, I'm going to remind you again, like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to keep drilling it into you. Uh, until we uh, until we hit that six digit number that we're looking for, we need a hundred k in followers. All right, that's when you know that's when you know we did something with something. Right now we're doing yep. okay. And we need to really do something here. Um, otherwise, I'll never be satisfied. Anyway, yes. also guys, Facebook getting salty fans. Uh, that page is filled with all kinds of wonderful firefighter. Info, stories, degeneracy, you name it. It's all there except for politics. So don't go bringing that to the ta to the page. You will get tossed. I didn't, I'm didn't. i not in charge of that. None of us are. But, hell, uh, Alan Ship over there and Jose Martinez are tearing it up. So thank you for creating that. Last but not least, guys, if you have any uh, questions for the show, for our Q&A, uh, 
shoot them over to get salty experience at gmail.com. Uh, shoot out, shoot your shout outs there, whatever, or, and all that kind of stuff. And guys, for Cup of Joe and Fuego, we have uh, Coob's podcast at gmail.com. And uh, that will be uh, where you send all your helmet cam footage, your fire photos, your rig photos, your table photos, your tattoo photos, your mustache photos, all mm -hmm. that good, interesting stuff. And that is all the news that's nice. fit to print. Excellent. I'm going to do a little shout out here. I saw a guy named Emil. He, I think he said he's from Sweden, checking in live. It's Emil from Sweden, watching the show live. Yeah, I saw a dude in Sweden watching it live. That was uh, yes. that was really cool. Now, so now we have Sweden, Australia, Germany, uh, Germany, uh, Canada, Britain, uh, Germany, Canada. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty freaking it's growing. Cool. Yeah. All right, Ruffy, what do we got? We have uh, Chief Debonato on Monday. Chief Debonato is on Monday, correct? Chief oh. Debonato on Monday. Excellent, Mr. Lester. Please I appreciate it. Chief. You are right, a gentleman you. and a great show. Great. Probably top five old school tip of the day. Love mm -hmm. it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, just hang out with us, uh, Lieutenant, yes. uh, to, to the end, and we'll be in the backstage again. So just hang out. Yes. Don't just dip out. Okay. okay. And good night to your adorable wife. Awesome. Thank you. Don't forget the live show. <laughs> no, we I'll got you, girl. Host. We got you. I'll be the host. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> Look at Kirk's face. I love it. <laughs> All right, fellas. Stay low and go. Kirk, it was a pleasure, man. Really looking into your life, right. man. It was it was really enjoyable. Just to let you know, really. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. See you at the big one. All right, guys. All right. See you all next week.